Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining Warfare Ecology. Bishop Blimmer will be joining us shortly. Well, good evening, good evening, good evening. This is another day that the Lord has made and like the old folks say, I will rejoice and I will be glad in it. Um, there's, a, there's a song that's been on my heart all day. I'm not gonna sing it, so don't get nervous. Um, it's one more time, one more time. He's allowed us to come together one more time. So this is another day that we're here on Warfare Ecology, Bishop Bloom will be joining us shortly. And so I'm sure this is gonna be a day to, it's gonna go down in history. And so I'm really excited of what's gonna be discussed today. And I'm looking forward to what God is gonna say and, and how God is gonna to bless today. So this is the day, this is the, this is the day and this is your season. Uh, so Tamila, how you doing today? I'm doing pretty good overseer and you? I'm doing great, great. So do you have a, a prophetic forecast for us today? You ask me that every Thursday. No, I every don't. I just do it on Thursdays. I, that's what I said. Every Thursday, you ask me that. Do okay. I have a prophetic forecast? And every Thursday, I tell you, no, I don't. Okay, now, <laughs> now, now, now that you said no, give it to us. But I don't. 
we, you know, I think it's still going to be like last week. We're going to wait and see what the Lord says, you know, because we ended up touching on the mind last week. And even with the topics that have been discussed this week, we still have to address the mind, especially okay. like with, with yesterday with Apostle Taylor. And he was talking about those five things that affect us. And, you okay. know, the mind, the body and family. Yeah, I'm doing too much talking. I'm going to <laughs> I'm going to have to stop you right now because you I can't let you go in my notes like that. I'm, I, you, I, I, you talk too much. <laughs> I got to stop you. And you'll see why. You'll see why in a few minutes. <laughs> <laughs> you were reading my notes. I said, how you? How, how can you see this far? I mean, it's, it's amazing. Wow, mm -hmm. we have our guests on today. And so let's go and um, let's take off and see where this train is going to go. BK, are you there today? Overseer, how are you, sir? I'm not doing good as you, but like Bishop would say all the time, but I'm trying. Well, you know, it's always a plum, please, and pleasure to be with you on Thursday as you sit uh, in the stead of our bishop. I uh, hope you're yeah. having a great day, you and Apostle Brown. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, these are big shoes to fill. These are big. I don't try it. I just, I just do my little part and move on out of the way. He, he's got some big shoes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. So what you want for us today? Yes, sir. It's always an awesome time to be able to come on and to express health and wellness about God's plan. God's plan. Uh, we know that this is God's plan. God's plan. Just because it's not a gateway drug, it's not a drug at all. It's a plant that has a seed that's put into the ground, and this is our greatest time of the year for those and for us that are in this industry because it's croptober season. So we're in harvesting mode and. And Oklahoma is expected to bring in literally 50 million pounds of harvest that's coming up out the ground in Oklahoma alone. Wow. And so that's a lot, a lot, a lot of cannabis. But this is how powerful this plant is. It has the ability to heal, has the ability to make whole, it has the ability to, to make you well. And we're so excited to be able to educate God's people concerning this because the Bible did say, I wish above all that thou would prosper and be in health even as thy soul prosper. And the prosperity of your body has to be in a balance just as your soul is. And so we're so excited with the transition that we've done with the bundle, moving it from the sample bundle back to the Bloomer Wellness Bundle. Yes, we've taken the top four items of our sample bundle pack and we created the Bloomer Wellness Bundle with the full size products. You got a choice of the gel relief or the salve, you're gonna get the gummies, you're going to get the tincture and the hand sanitizer. All of these are the full size for a double up. It typically will cost you $27. That's including shipping and handling. Now you're just going to pay $55 for these full size products. This is a 30 day supply, $200 in value. You're saving $145 for only $55 plus shipping and handling. If you buy two, you have a double up of 100 and you don't pay any shipping and handling. Go to Bloomer wellness.com today and experience the bloomer wellness bundle which is going to introduce you to the fullness of cbd go now bloomer wellness bundle uh, at bloomerwellness.com well uh, do you have any specials of for us today uh, you know we go shopping i would go to the clearance rack and see what's on special see what's on sale or am i even if don't i'm going to a yard sale so don't let me go there you i know you got something for me well, Overseer King, that is the Bloomingdale special right there. It's known as it. the, Bloom, the Bloomer Wellness. That's a, a hundred and fifty, almost hundred and fifty dollars in savings. Because mm -hmm. we sell, we sell one tincture, that thousand milligram tincture. We sell it for sixty five dollars, but they get in the whole bundle pack for only fifty five dollars. That's a savings. All right, okay. So I'm bringing my coupon. I'm, I got my coupons. I'm ready. <laughs> So give us the business side of it. Well, we have our, our, our product feature for the month and that product feature for the month, <coughs> Overseer King is the Agility Performance Roll-On. It's 2,500 milligrams of straight oil that you can apply to those particular hotspots area. Everybody get your roll-on. Our Agility Performance 2,500 milligram CBD oil roll-on is a favorable product. The size and the clear application makes the AP roll-on convenient and can alleviate pain and inflammation. It can be utilized before and after the studio and the gym. 
easily stored in pockets, bags, purses, and desks. It's great for target relief, absorb quickly, glide the AP roll on over your fingers, wrists, knees and toes, necks and temples for lasting results. Avoid contact with the eyes, but it is the perfect uh, travel for any ailment that you might have, this agility roll on. Very small, compact, but it has full of oil of 2,500 milligrams. Today, it is yours when you go to bloomerwellness.com and also put in the Welcome 10, which this is what you were probably talking about, uh, Overseer King, the discount. You get 10% off on any purchase. Uh, once you put this in, you only can use it once, so don't try to use it more than once. Uh, it's only good for one application. It's the Welcome 10. You're going to receive 10% off of any purchase. That's even including the Bloomer Wellness Bundle. So it's $55. Take an additional $5.50 off. You can use that today by going to bloomerwellness.com and experience the Welcome 10 and the Agility Performance Roll-On. It's yours today. Wow, you said the welcome ten. When you said that, I thought I thought it'd be something like ten for ten. You know, going to Family Dollar, the ten, you know, ten. <laughs> well, I mean, I try. <laughs> Ain't that cheap, overseer? We can't we can't give them ten for ten. Lord have mercy. <laughs> well, that's not a <laughs> well, okay. Well, how can we be a part? Become a part of that? Absolutely. There is a shortage of jobs in America. Forty plus million people without employment. And we are considered one of the essentials uh, in the country today, still a roaring business right now because we're at the ground level. It's projected to be a $2.1 billion industry next year and an $80 billion industry in the next 10 years by 2030. And you got an opportunity to get in at the ground level. We did not have this before work for ecology. We created this because of the demand and the concern that Bishop had for God's people to bring them into kingdom economy. You can be an ambassador of health and wellness by being a distributor. All you got to do now is email me at bk at ht-wellness.com or call 405-310-0190. And I'm going to get you the information that you need that you might be able to read it. And our next training session is not until December. We have about 25 distributors right now. We want to perfect this system, get them going. Wonderful website presentation. Product is awesome. We want to get the system down that when you come in, you have already gone through, uh, we've already gone through our kinks and we're now ready to take in the next 30 so it can be even a greater seller. Today is your day to become your own boss. Email me at bk at ht-wellness.com or call 405-310. 0190. Count up the cost. Be the boss. I'm going to send you the information. Today is your day to be a part of this health and wellness business. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Great presentation. Thank you. Apostle Brown, how you doing? I'm doing good, Overseer. How are you? Great, great, great. So we'll wait for Bishop. Bishop Bloomer will be on shortly. Um, I don't see him. Do you see him up there? I don't see him. I do not see him yet. Okay. Well, I was just sitting here thinking, and um, I'm not not to go into the lesson or anything about um, how there's nothing to a day. You know, you get up in the morning, and I mean, it, it's 12 o'clock. You look up again, it's 3 o'clock, and the, the day is gone. And so if you really don't really set goals and focus that day, oh. it, can, it, can, it can go south real quick. Because, you know, some days, like most days I get up with a goal and with a plan. There's some days I don't. And the days that I don't, I don't get nothing done because, I mean, I'm all over the places. And so that lets us know that we need to get up. You know, the Bible says, write the vision, make it plain, that we that we read it and run. And so I I, I, my work, I, I, hold, I don't sleep much. I'm up like one o'clock in the morning to four, I'm up. If you call me at three o'clock in the morning, I pick the phone up. So that, that's, that's, my, that's my time. It's my time. Nobody's calling. Nobody need anything. It's just me. And so I just love, that's my time. And so those are the times that I'm really I'm really planning everything during those times. I can't do it during the day because I'm not, I'm, I'm all over the place. But that time I really, I can sit down and I can set goals and know what I'm going to do that day. But then, and, but, because if I don't structure, if you don't structure, you know, you know what I'm saying. If you don't structure, and and I you perfectly do, because what happens, you wind up losing your focus. Mm -hmm. And when you lose your focus, then there you go. You 
all over the place trying to get this done, trying to get that done. You never accomplish nothing or either you working hard and pulling everything together. You've lost your focus. You've lost what you're supposed to do. And that's what happens to us so much. We, we, we look at what all is in front of us and don't know. We need to put some of those things in a priority so that we don't lose our focus. Right. There are three things I know that I'm going to do during the day. There's three things, and everything else is centered around those three things. The first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to stop by the church. Um, uh -huh. I mean, I'm going to stop by the church. And then after I do that, I'm going to stop by Bishop's house. And then the third thing, I'm going to go jogging. I'm going to do my three miles walk or jog. I'm going to do those three. And if I don't do those three, somehow I just feel like I haven't, I haven't really accomplished what I, you know, it, it, everything else falls between those categories. Those are my pillars for the day. Bishop's house, the church, and me hitting that trail. Those are my pillars for that day. Uh -huh. And on the trail, that's where I do my thinking and my worship and all like that. And, and my, you know, that's, I, that's, that's my, my me time. So those are my pillars. So everything else fit between those those pillars. And once I do complete those things, I, when, I, when the day closed, I can do what God said in the book of Genesis. It is good. It was good. Mm -hmm. And you know, if a pillar gets knocked down, is ain't nothing going right. Tell me about it. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Those pillars, right? If right, if I don't get the bishop's house, I'm, I'm I'm behind something. You know, something is not going to get done. If I don't get to the church, if I don't if I don't get my if you know, every day we need to put set aside time for ourselves. Absolutely. And, and because we, we'll never be the best us if we don't put some time aside for ourselves. We'll always be living out of something else and never being who we supposed to be. So we never come out. Do we ever come out? No. Something always comes out that is not us. Mm -hmm. We have to have time for ourselves. Right. You have to make make time for yourself. Absolutely. <laughs> There used to be a time I didn't really do that. I, I mean, I'm just put everybody else first. And really, if you do that, then people, it, it, you know, this one needs over here, this one needs over here. This. But I said, wait, 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 hold up, hold up, hold up. You know, and you get pulled in like five or six different directions. And, 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 and but then you need to say, well, look, look, wait, wait, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. I tell you, I, I'm, I'm not going to take this call right here. I'm going to I'm going to just take some time over here. And the bishop preached about some couple of years ago. And you may have been to the church then when he preached about every day you need to take a Sabbath. And, and not mm -hmm. just not mm -hmm. the church. You need to take a personal Sabbath, a personal moment of, during the day. Every day, you need to take a, a moment to rest, to breathe. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, just relax. I tell people all the time, I say, at least give yourself somewhere during the day, give yourself 30 minutes. If you can begin to give yourself 30 minutes, you can increase it, but you got to give yourself some time. Wow. You know, so, people talk about, well, I'm giving God this. And then you come out, you grouchy, you, you uh uh, uh uh. You got to give yourself some time so you can become everything you're supposed to be. Because wow. you miss, you miss great opportunities. You miss great doors because you're busy running doing this, this, this. When God may want you somewhere at a very specific time and you can't get there because you're doing all this other stuff. And we can get done what we need to get done, but sometimes it's us operating. And we as believers, we don't operate underneath our own strength. That's one thing we have to understand. We wow. have appointed times to do stuff. Wow. Everything. That's... And we got to have some time for ourselves. We got to. Wow. Now, what happens when you get to that appointed time and your mind isn't there yet? I mean, you, you, the person that's going to miss gonna find... it. The, the person that's going to finance the second half of your life is standing right in front of you, but you something happened to you 10 minutes ago. Somebody ran across you in the road, you know, threw the thumb up. Now you, you're mad. Now you, not, I mean, not thumb, but your middle finger. And now yeah. you're mad. The person is standing in front of you that's going to finance the rest of your life, and now you take it out on him, and he changes his mind. And that happens simply because we get so involved in us and what we're doing. And a lot of things that we're doing, I don't think that we were supposed to do them. Mm. We've got to have that time so we can hear clearly, so we can do what we got to do. And when we do it, everything is like, I think I heard somebody say that this week, but it's like everything you put your hand to, it just begins to prosper. It begins mm -hmm. to prosper. It begins to grow. It begins to set you up for the next and the next and the next. But if we, we, we got a whole desk full of stuff. Mm. 
and we ain't getting nothing done. Have you ever been doing things and you never get anything done as you come back and it's, it piles up? And, well, mm-hmm. something's wrong with that. Mm-hmm. It's something definitely wrong with that. And that's where we have to regather ourselves. Um, I think I heard Adelia say it on Monday or somebody said it. Uh, re- 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 recover so you can discover. And that's wow. one thing we need to do. We need to recover some things, go back and look at some things so we can really discover who we are, really mm-hmm. discover what we're supposed to do so we can get some things done. Sometimes we can't get no accomplishments done because we don't even take a moment for ourselves. Mm-hmm. Wow. That, that was... Recover. You said recover so you can... Say it, say it again now. Recover so you can discover. Now, it may, they may not have said it in that way, but that's the way I heard it. We need to recover so we can discover. And so when we recover some things, then we discover, well, this is what was in me all along. And so now, you know, I can connect to some different things. Wow. Wow. We so need to go through a recovery stage. I'm right next. You know, yeah. after you have surgery, they put you in a recovery room. Mm-hmm. And after you go in that recovery room, then you find out a whole lot of things. Then you learn a whole lot. Then you're going to know what you can do, what you can't do, what you're limited to, what you might be able to do, which sets you up to do greater things. Wow. Recovery. We got to take time to recover. And I said something I've been going through lately is physical therapy. You know, you know, you, 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 when, you, when you hurt a certain part of your body, you're trying to heal, they'll tell you, they'll give you different exercises to do to strengthen that. And, and I don't like, I really don't know. I go to the, all my doctor's appointments faithfully, but there's one appointment I do not, I think I missed the last two because they make me do stuff that's painful. She'll tell me, <laughs> touch my toes. And I'm telling her, I cannot touch my toes. She said, well, try I said, I'm telling you, I cannot touch my toes. And I'm, I'm, I'm trying, I'm leaning, and I'm, I'm, really having, I'm really having a problem. And I don't like you telling me to, 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 to go through this because it's painful. I don't want but to, but I, you she, know what? Sometimes we come out in the best situation when we can go through some pain. Yeah, but it, but I don't want to touch my toes. It hurts. Yeah, you, sometimes you can't get greater until you do what you got to do at that point. Wow. Pain so, produces a whole lot of stuff, and it ain't always bad. So that might be why I'm not getting healed in what in, in the areas I need to get healed in, because I always tell her to go on to the next thing, because I, I cannot. So she give me something easy. She said, "Okay, take kick this ball. Oh, 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 I can do this. I'm kicking the ball all over the place. But it's but it's not. It's well, not. See, that's just like God. He wants to stretch us. Right. You know, like Bishop. He came in and he stretched us. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like you know, he wants to stretch us beyond what I what we think our capacity is. Wow. Well, there you go. How y'all doing? Great, We're good, Bishop. Bishop, and you." Fantastic, fantastic. Great conversation. Uh, let's get the heavens opened up and then we can proceed with uh, uh, this, this, this chat. For those of you that are watching today, we're going to do a little bit of talking out of Warfare Ecology. You can go to our website and download the, is, is it download? Mm-hmm. Is it and download uh, the book? Uh, we are going to go back to what we were on last, uh, last week. Our supporting scripture is going to be uh, Deuteronomy 18, uh, 10. Um, and uh, that's what, let me see. Let me see. We're going to go to uh, Tamila. How are you doing today? Bishop, I'm doing pretty good. And you? Fantastic. Uh, Evelyn, do you have the book? No, I do not. I'm just answering Benita. And Bishop, funny that you asked because I pulled out four books and I do not see Warfare Ecology. I have The Wisdom Walk, No, Not Me Again, More of Him, and The General's Notes, Intel. Wow. 
<laughs> okay, but I, I think they can make it possible for you to get either the okay. book or get the lesson that we're going to talk about. Let me figure out what page yes, sir. I'm going to be um, what page I'm going to be on today. I want to talk about and he, let me see. I want to go to page. I know I want to go to page number 26. Uh, we, we did a little bit of that last week. We, uh, we did um, the trick or treat, the mask, the mask and um, costumes. Uh, we did uh, Jack O' Lantern, ancient, ancient past from Goku. We did Bewitch. All right. You remember that, Evelyn? Did you read this last week? Who read for us? That was Tawana. Okay. I think it was. Oh, okay. I thought it was Cynthia. Uh, we and then Portland's uh, guarding the eye gate, uh, magic, uh, uh, rock music. let's go to page, uh, and then uh, maybe Tamila can get it to you. Let's go to page, we're going to do Satan Unmask today. Let's go to page. 40 in Warfare Ecology, page 40, 41, 42, 45, 47. Uh, let's go to uh, uh, page 40, 40, let's go for uh, 39. Page 39 through, let me get you over here. 39 through, it's gonna be two chapters, 39 through 55. Page 39 through 50, through 55. October, October. All right, uh, uh, it's time to sow. Let's get your seeds and let's go into the um, uh, opening up the heavens so that we can minister on the open heaven. Now, every demon and devil is going to be mad today, upset, angry, and is going to try to distract you. Believe me, let's open up the heavens and then we're sowing a croptober seed. A croptober seed. Everybody needs to sow a seed to guard your ear gate, your eye gate, your mouth gate, your nose gate, and your touch gate. All right? Uh, sow a seed and open the heavens. Uh, there are 10 of you whose assignment is to open up the heavens. You're sowing the seed of $90. 90 is the number of days that the Ark of the Covenant was at Obadiah's house after leaving Abinadad's house for 20 some odd years. Uh, when the heavens opened up, there are those of you that are sowing $27 into the open heaven. 27 is the number of an open hand in the service of spiritual warfare. And it shall come to pass that God is going to give you favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And when you, it shall come to pass that when you go, you shall not leave empty. Uh, this is the season and your time for abundance. I heard when I was coming on today, they was talking a little bit about God stretching you. That's what the seed is all about. That's what the seed. Actually, there's a term uh, for that in, in the agricultural mar, um, uh, um, linguistics is called Bleeding the seed, bleeding the seed, it's bleeding the seed. All right, so um, let's get our seed together and begin to uh, sow it. Dollar sign, big guy, Bloomer, Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com. PayPal me, GGB Ministries. Text to give, text Bloomer to 844-889-1559. You're sowing that seed, you're sowing that seed, that's sowing that seed, sowing that seed. Dollar sign, big guy bloomer, Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com. PayPal me, GGB Ministries. Text to give, text bloomer to 844-889-1559. Sowing the seed of 90, sowing the seed of 27. The moment we're going to be sowing our Croctober offerings. That means every, now if you, if the Lord did not speak to you to be a financial intercessor to open up the heavens, then you don't move. But I know he spoke to you about getting seed into the ground for the month of October, because he spoke to all of us about that. So your closed hand is, uh, is refusing the harvest that is on its way to you. Dollar sign, big guy, Bloomer, Zell, Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com, PayPal me, GGB Ministries, text to give, text Bloomer to 844-889-1559. I believe it's going to be a glorious, a glorious day. 
Uh, Tamila. Yes, Bishop. Are you able to get that uh, to Evelyn, those pages? Yes, I'm working on getting it to her. I'm gonna screenshot her just in case. So it's on the way. Great, thank you. There, there was a song, the song was out called It's On The Way, Your Blessing. Uh, King likes to say all the time, he's as we speak. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I called the person, they said, I ain't spoke to him yet. <laughs> <laughs> Dollar sign, big guy Bloomer, Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com, PayPal me, GGB Ministries, text to give, text Bloomer to 844-889-1559, 1559. There are three things uh, that I wrote down that I want to talk about. Uh, um, um, uh, one of them is a uh, tar pit, tar pit. The other one is the right to, and uh, the third one is will you, will you. These are terms that we're going to use in spiritual warfare. In spiritual warfare, these are terms that we're going to use in spiritual warfare. And I'm going to show you how to get out of some bondages that you have found yourself into. Dollar sign, big guy Bloomer, Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com, PayPal me, GGB Ministries, text to give, text Bloomer to 844-889-1559, 1559. Let's get that seed in the ground in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. All right, five more persons sowing that seed of 90, five more sowing that seed of 90, and the others are sowing 27. Let's hear God, let's obey him in the name of Jesus. All right, don't hold the boat up. Don't, 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 don't. It's the song out years ago said, don't rock the boat. Don't tip the boat over. Ooh, I am old. Tweety lee 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 I am old. All right, dollar sign, big guy Bloomer, Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com. PayPal me, GGB Ministries. Text to give, text Bloomer to 844-889-15. 59, 15, 59. Understand, Elder, the uh, giveaway is coming up on tomorrow, right? It's tomorrow at one o'clock. We're ready. We're, we're ready. And this is about our 20th giveaway. I mean, we have, we have really been blessed and we haven't turned into one away. Wow. Cars wrapped around the block. Yeah, the police come tell us that whatever you do, do quickly because there are people blocking, they're blocking the stoplights and everywhere. I mean, it, it's, it's a blessing to the community. People are beginning to to come back, tell, tell Bishop, thank you. And so we are pulling together something now to show you of what the people about, are saying about what we are doing. Great, great. That's something. Thank God. And it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And your support is helping us to do what God has given us uh, uh, to do in the name of Jesus. Probably before we go off today, we get a chance to talk to OJ in, in Africa. If OJ's listening, I hope he pulls himself together to push his button so he can be on the program uh, later on. We're going to talk about uh, demons and devils. Really, really, if we can get OJ uh, set up to come on now, that would be good because I want to talk about fetish when we talk about Satan unmasked. We're going to talk about fetish and spells and voodoo and witchcraft. And um, he's in Delta State in, in Nigeria, which is, uh, I think, a state over from Wari. And Wari is where some real serious witchcraft goes on at. We're going to talk about that today. I'm going to get a few testimonies uh, from him um, on that. Uh, so uh, is OJ, are we getting him? Uh, all right. Thank you so much. Dollar sign, big guy, Bloomer, Zell, Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com. PayPal me, GGB Ministries. Text to give, text Bloomer to 844-889-1559. So much is going on. Crazy stuff. A uh, uh, Michigan governor. The governor of Michigan, by these uh, these uh, um, Trump supporters and what have you, have put together a plot to kidnap her. Can you imagine? <laughs> is is this two thousand or or is this nineteen sixties? Oh my God! Oh my God! Oh my God! Okay. Okay, and their plot failed, but this is these these groups, they're crazy. It's, it's, it's almost like a, 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 a cult of some sort. This is, oh my God. Dollar sign, big guy, Bloomer, Zell, Bloom at bishopbloomer.com. PayPal me, GGB Ministries. Text to give, text Bloomer to 844-889-1559, 1559. 
59. Just waiting for a few more of you. I know you're getting your cash app or your 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 Zelle or your which call it ready because God has already set you up so that we can minister up under an open heaven. Uh, Tamila, please let me know when uh, she has the information and so we can go and you, you, you'll be able to put it up on the screen. Yeah, okay. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Bishop, she has it. She has it, very, very good. Mm -hmm. All right, um, give me, give me the, uh, work on getting me the definition of Satan and the definition, the definition of the devil and the definition of demons. Woo-wee! It is war, fair, ecology today. Because mm -hmm. this is October. And I, and, and, and call me crazy if you want to, I know, I know what the cults are doing. I'm clear on that, what the cults are doing. All right, so Elder, uh, take us into prayer today that God will cover us under the blood of Jesus as we begin to teach on this. Father God, we thank you right now that as your blood covers, we thank you, we're under your protection, God, we're under your wings, God, we thank you that no harm to come um, um, around us, God, in the name of Jesus, even those that are watching online, God, protect them, protect their families, God, even as we discuss and, and, and we open up the plots of the enemy against them and let them know that they can be prosperous during this season. They don't have to be under any spell, but let them know, God, that the spell has been broken and the chains have been destroyed in Jesus' name. We glorify and we thank you right now for victory in this area on this day, victory in our finances, which shall, have, which shall reach our goals in Jesus' name, which shall reach our numbers and our goals in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, so, uh, Apostle uh, Brown, take us into prayer, uh, prayer of deliverance for the people uh, that we can stay the process so there'll be no manifestations until we're ready for execution. So, Father, we thank you on this day and we glorify you and magnify you, God. We thank you for all your many blessings. So on today, God, as the teaching begins, we say no distractions. We say that the families are protected by the blood of Jesus. There'll be no manifestations. There'll be no ripping and tearing. Only deliverance will come to set the captives free, God, without any ripping and tearing. And we say there'll be no recalling and there'll be no striking back to bring any harm and leave no residue in the name of Jesus. Okay, so now give us... Uh, um, uh, you have the definitions of Evelyn has it. All right, give us the definitions of of devil, Satan, and then demons. Okay. Devil. The personal supreme spirit of evil, often represented in Christian belief as the temper of humankind, the leader of the apostate angels, and the ruler of hell usually used with the often used as an interjection and an intensive or generalized term of abuse. An evil spirit, an extremely wicked person, a person of notable energy, recklessness, and dashing spirit. Um, it says something very trying or provoking, severe criticism or rebuke, and that's devil. Okay. So now the second one was what? An evil spirit? An evil spirit. Uh huh. Is what? Devil. Uh huh. Well, go ahead. The definition. That was the definition. All right. Go, go back to the, you first, want the first one. First definition is what? The first What's the name spirit? of the first definition? Devil. Devil. What's the second definition? That was all for devil. Okay. What's the second definition? Satan. Satan. Okay. And the third one was what? Demon. Demon. And in, under the devil, they had evil spirit. Correct, which was demon. Right, which was demon. And it is a what? An evil spirit. It is an evil spirit. An evil spirit is what? A demon. But what is it? A what devil. the definition? No, you read the definition of it. It's an extremely evil person. Oh, oh okay. That's right. Because evil spirit, we derive from the word attitude. It's attitude and it's transferable. So when you say you know, that's a evil spirit. You're actually talking about a person. 
that heifer is evil. That you that's what you're talking about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now try casting out that. Okay. So now, how do you deal with a uh, an evil spirit that is uh, a person? The <laughs> Bible says, and how do they become evil? They come. They become evil according to the word of God by communication. Filthy communication corrupts good manners. It is manners that determines your character. Okay? So this is going to be a good day, I think. Overseer, you were shaking your head. You said when a person, you said an evil spirit can be a person. Yes. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, evil spirit, first of all, evil spirit is an attitude. 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 That's the part of that's the part that is transferred. It's a, it's an attitude. Now, what is an attitude? Give me a definition of attitude. So you can't cast that out. Then how how can you get rid of that? Uh, if if you that's it's got to be corrected, right? Some kind of correction. Well, I'm going to show you. Uh, a settled way of thinking or feeling about someone or something, typically one that is re reflected in a person's behavior. See, mm -hmm. an attitude is the behavior. The evil spirit is an attitude. It is the uh, corrupting of good character, good manners. How you doing? Fine. Uh, would you like to? Would you, would you like to have some water? Uh, 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 you, you, Filthy communication corrupts good manners. The minute the good manners is corrupted, it opens the door for an attitude that is in the nature of Lucifer. Mm -hmm. It's not the attitude of God. For the fruit of the spirit is love, peace, joy, meekness, temperance. Once, you, once, once your character is corrupted, you can't host the fruit of the spirit. It can't be hosted. It can't be hosted because you ain't got no love. You're not kind. You, 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 your temper is off the whip. All those kind of things that, that, and this is the reason why Satan interjected into our doctrine and ideology that there are nine fruits of the spirit and you can have different ones without having them all. It's not the fruits, plural, of the spirit. It's the fruit of the spirit. It is one fruit with nine attributes. One fruit, nine attributes. People say, well, I have love, but I don't have joy. It's not true. If you don't have them all, you don't have none. Okay? All right? So um, so the first one is devil. Right? Now, intertwine with that word devil, we're going to get Lucifer. We're going to get Satan. We're going to get evil spirits. We're going to get all of those things under the heading of the devil. So now in the Old Testament, there's times you talk about the devil, one, or it's, it's, it's used plural, devils, which are referring to demons or classes of people who have um, certain characteristic flaws that takes on the nature of the enemy, although they operate in the realm of the earth. This is uh, Acts chapter number 13, verse number 40, the, uh, the, the Chaldeans uh, who are vicious and evil and um, uh, they'll, they'll, they'll kill you and not feel anything with it. It's, it's, it. All this is going on there, okay? So the next definition is? Satan. Satan. The angel who in Jewish belief is commanded by God to tempt humans to sin, to accuse the sinners and to carry out God's punishment. The rebellious angel who in Christian belief is the adversary of God and Lord of evil. Okay, so Satan is the Lord of evil. Then the last one is, last definition is? The rebellious angel mm -hmm. who in Christian belief is the adversary of God and the Lord of evil. What's so, the last definition? The next definition, the, the demon, yeah. An evil spirit, a source or now, agent of evil. Now part. stop right there. So now a demon is a what? An evil spirit. An evil spirit. And we just had a discussion that an evil spirit can be what? 
yeah. can be a person, an attitude, which is a person. And so the teaching that we did on human demons comes out of this definition and out of the Hebrew word, cow or Chaldeans. Uh, let's go find, find uh, uh, Habakkuk chapter number one, verse number five or five and one, one of those, uh, 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 Evelyn, if you can. Chapter one in Habakkuk and five. Yeah, what does it say? Behold ye among the heathen, Mm -hmm. and regard and wonder marvelously. For I will work a work in your days, which ye will not believe, though it be told you. Mm -hmm. Keep going. For lo, I raise up the Chaldeans, that bitter and hasty nation. Watch this. Which I shall... raise up the Chaldeans, that bitter and hasty and... nation. Uh -huh. Which shall march through the breadth of the land to possess the dwelling places that are not theirs. Stop right there. What does demons do when they possess a person? They take dwelling places that are what? Not, Not theirs. theirs. So now God is revealing unto us the characteristics of a demon, and he has a human model for it, which he refers to as Chaldeans. So let's go back to verse number five and start off at the top. Here it says, what does it say? Behold ye among the heathen, and regard, and wonder marvelously. For I will work a work in your days, which ye will not believe, though it be told you. For lo, I raise up the Chaldeans, that bitter and hasty nation, which shall march through the breadth of the land to possess the dwelling places that are not theirs. Go back to verse number five and read it one more time. I'm going to hit you with something. Here we go. Behold ye Behold, among the heathen. Ye amongst the heathens. What is a heathen? What is a heathen? A heathen is a person that doesn't believe in God. A heathen is a person that doesn't believe in God. Let's get a better working definition of a heathen, but heathen is a person that doesn't believe in God. Behold ye who are amongst the heathens. Uh-huh. Here we go. Heathen. Of or relating to people or nations that do not acknowledge the God of the Bible. So now, so heathens are people that don't believe in God. Now, this is the Bible says. The Bible says that this truth about demons will be hidden from who? Heathens only. Believers are not, uh, believers are not uh, oblivious to this, to this fact. We know that evil spirits are, are, are attitudes and stuff like that. That's why we be binding people when it comes to, uh, wait, wait a minute, stop right here. In the name of Jesus. That's why we do that. Because we, 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 we know that. Uh, heathens don't do that. Heathens go get sage, <laughs> aromatherapy, or something like that. So let's take it from the top of the tip. You know what? Uh, that's Habakkuk chapter number one, right? Verse number five. Yes, sir. Go to verse number one. The burden which Habakkuk the prophet did see. O Lord, how long shall I cry, and thou wilt not hear? Even cry out unto thee of violence, and thou wilt not save. Why dost thou show me iniquity and cause me to behold grievance? For spoiling and violence are before me, and there are that raise up strife and contention. Therefore the law is slacked, and judgment doth never go forth. For the wicked doth compass about the righteous. Therefore wrong judgment proceedeth. Behold ye among the heathen, and regard and wonder marvelously. Okay, so let's, now you have verse number five again. So, yes, sir. Uh, so we started at verse number one and the prophet is asking God, why is all this going on? And the Lord is saying unto him, uh, is, is, is beginning to reveal unto him that amongst the heathens, they don't have this knowledge or wisdom. Amongst the heathens, it's a, it's, 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 it's a regular day. Amongst those who are sanctified, that's where the disturbance comes in at. The disturbance mm. is comes... Well, we, we use terms like, I was grieved in my spirit. Something is bothering me. Something is off because we understand about the multiplication of the kingdoms of darkness multiplying on the earth. Satan's kingdom is in operation in the earth realm. And this is what causes the friction between those of us who are believers and those who are non-believers. 
And so the prophet opens up and he says, you know, uh, what are you going to do, God, about the uh, about the merchandising? I think it's in verse number two. Read verse number one. He says, um, the burdens which Habakkuk the prophet did see. Okay, so these are the burdens that the uh, Habakkuk the prophet did see. So he, he's seeing through all this stuff, right? Okay, and he says this. Oh, Lord, yeah. how long shall I cry? How, now, now, remember, the job of the prophet, well, in the, in, the, in the Bible days, the olden days, which were the seers, the job of them was to cry loud against sin and to lift up their voice against certain things. But now we're crying out loud against sin and lifting up our voices and what have you, and nothing is happening because you're crying uh, uh, the revelation of God amongst people that don't believe in him. They're heathens, and God is going to make this plain to the prophet so he doesn't start spinning his wheels in areas that he shouldn't be spinning his wheels in. Keep going. And thou wilt not hear. You will not hear. Even cry out unto thee of violence, and thou wilt not save. Uh-huh. Why dost thou show me iniquity? Why and cause me iniquity? Uh-huh. And cause me to behold grievance. Uh-huh. For spoiling and violence are before me. Now, what is spoiling? What is spoiling? Okay, let me explain spoiling. Spo when you go to war, you take up the spoils, which is all of the income and the wealth and so on and so forth like that. So spoiling uh, uh, amongst them is that there are people who are manipulating, stealing the insurance, uh, what you call it, uh, uh, identity theft, all these different types of things. People come up with all different types of ways and schemes to get money from you. Many people with this, many people with these, um, with this susu and stuff like that. A lot of them are good, but there's a whole lot of people just into spoiling. They're gonna get theirs and they're not gonna put nothing back in. They're gonna rob you. Okay? He said, we see all this going on. Go ahead. And there are that raise up strife and contention. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the law is slacked. And judgment doth never go forth. Mm -hmm. For the wicked doth compass about the righteous. So he's saying that, what do you do when the judges are corrupt? This is the problem we have in the United States of America. A white boy gets shot and the whole country jumps on the back of him to throw the person there. A, a, a black boy gets shot and now we got to see the video 18,000 times. Here we go. Therefore, wrong judgment proceeded. Ah, here we go. Behold ye among the heathen, and regard, and wonder marvelously. For I will work a work in your days, which ye will not believe, though it be told you. For lo, I raised up the Chaldeans, that bitter and hasty nation. God says, which shall, I raised up the Chaldeans, that bitter and hasty nation. Uh -huh. Which shall march through the breadth of the land mm -hmm. to possess the dwelling places that are not theirs. Yeah. They are terrible and mm -hmm. dreadful. Mm -hmm. Their judgment and their dignity shall proceed of themselves. Mm -hmm. Their horses also are swifter than the leopards and are more fierce than the evening wolves. Mm. And their horsemen shall spread themselves and their horsemen shall come from afar. They shall fly as the eagle that hasteth to eat. They shall come all the violence. If I, want, if I wanted to start trouble this afternoon and turn this into a... a um, and turn this discussion along with this scripture into a uh, um, a social justice message. Uh, I, I would talk about a boy getting shot in the streets. Uh, uh, the protesters come out to protest. They're saying to themselves, this is wrong. The heathens are saying, it's, it, it's okay. They call for the police officers, the police officers come. Then they call for the National Guard. They bring in people from other, what you call, in the crowds or anarchists that are throwing firebombs and creating. So the narrative of what just took place is not talked about because we're focusing our attention on the looting, the spoiling, and the indignation that is rising. And we never deal with the, the crisis or the issues. This is the reason why the enemy wants to shut the voices of the apostles and the prophets because we're the ones who keeps the judgment and the government of God in place. And if the enemy can, um, he, if he can, how could I say it? If he can discredit them, if he can defund them, then they have no power. 
and without power, we're back into vigilante justice, where everybody's carrying a flag and an AK and, and, and an AK-7 and a gun. So I took a biblical text and I put it into the headlines so you can see the fierce horses that are like leopards, those are humdees and tanks. If, if this was if this was the Bible, if this was if the Bible was being written right now, the, the, there wouldn't be a horse mentioned. There wouldn't be an arrow mentioned. It would be a Uzi. It would be the the military strength that we have today. And so I want to take that and bring you up to place while I'm making my point here. Okay. Uh, the next verse. What verse are you in? That's verse number seven. You in now, right? Um, I just read eight. Right, eight. Okay. Uh, go back to go back to seven, eight, and let's go yes, into nine. Uh huh. They are terrible and dreadful. They're terrible and they're, dreadful. Their judgment and their dignity shall proceed of themselves. Mm -hmm. Their horses also are swifter than the leopards. Mm -hmm. See, and I'm more surprised with the what what, what the, the surprise what the uh, what the the, 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 the jury the, was going to come back with uh, with Brianna Taylor. What's the girl to tell it in? Briella Tanner, they were surprised. I wasn't surprised. Listen, listen, in order to understand, in order to understand psychologically, when you go into uh, psychology and you're understanding psychology, before you deal with the medicine, you judge the patient by the file. The thicker the file, that's where you know, because it's history. History. And so everybody just thinking that, you know, 400 years of history is going to be changed by a knee on the neck of a person after these people have been hanging us from trees? Think again. It's the history. And that's how we function and operate in the word of God. If you want to know what God is saying, read what he said. If you want to know what God is doing, read what he did. Behold, I am the Lord. I am the same and I change not. That's what he said about himself. All right, let's close this. Their horses also are swifter than the leopards and are more fierce than the evening wolves. And their horsemen shall spread themselves and their horsemen shall come from afar. Mm -hmm. They shall fly as the eagle that hasteth to eat. Mm -hmm. They shall come off of violence. What is, what, Evelyn, what is the eagle that hasten to eat? What kind of, what is that? That he hastens to. Yeah, hastens means is ready to eat or swift to eat. But what is the eagle that is hastened to eat? What is that? I don't know, Bishop, I can't. It's a buzzard flying uh -oh. over that. Yes, it's a buzzard flying over that which waiting oh. for it to drop dead so it can scoop down to eat. It's not gonna kill it, but it's right. gonna pick off of you if you fall. So we have this kind of character operating in our church where there's members in the church that won't kill members but if they fall, they're going to mm. scoop down on them. Mm. They ain't gonna, they're not going to kill you. They're not gonna, they, they, they ain't going to do that. But mm. they're going to wait for you to fall. And the minute you fall, they're going to scoop down and say, I told you, but mm. you don't listen to me. I'm trying to tell you these niggas don't like you know how. They're they, 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 yeah, they going to wait for you to fall. They're waiting for you to say, you know what I felt bad about? Say, I didn't agree with that. Oh. Mm. Now let me tell you. And that's when they begin to pick from you. Okay. Here we go. They shall come off of violence. Their faces shall sup up as the east wind, and they shall gather the captivity as the sand. And they shall scoff at the kings, and the princes shall be a scorn unto them. Mm -hmm. They shall deride every stronghold, for they shall heap dust and take it. Then shall his mind change, and he shall pass over and offend in putting his power unto his God. Okay, so so I don't take the whole message and teach you on that whole thing today. I, would, I just really, really wanted to deal with, 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 with attitude. Mm. And um, um, these are the uh, uh, Chaldeans, or they say Chaldeans, that, which were Canaanites. They came out of Canaan. Now, here's the deal. Who came out? Who was a Canaanite? Abraham was a Canaanite. And the Lord said to him, come out from amongst those people and amongst your kindred. <laughs> You can't stay in there and be successful. You got to yes. come out. Okay. Um, 
let me do one thing before we, we go forth, because I pray that there are ministers that are watching and leaders that are that 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 that, that are watching. Um, they are they. <laughs> It is one thing to be called. Uh, um, it is not another thing to be sent forth, released, called of God, then released and sent forth by man. Here's the problem that we keep continue to have. We have the problem with God calls a person and then they go send themselves. Yeah. All right, one, one more time. Because this is, this is the problem that we're having. And remember... A lot of these young men and young women who are going into ministry right now, mm -hmm. they're not called into ministry. They're called into titles and positions. That never happened to me. They're called into titles and positions. How, how, how do you come from being an elder in the church to being a bishop and an and overseer of your own organization all within two years? How do you... I'm disgusted. How 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 do how how do you do this? It's a demonic attitude. The process, the laying on of hands of the presbyter, the submitting yourself. You know, young people are becoming very very smart. They'll say that my spiritual mother is such and such, my spiritual father is such and such but they align themselves with the spiritual mothers and the spiritual fathers who they deem is weak enough so they can say that they have a covering and at the same time manipulate and do whatever they want to do. When we get ready to bust this thing open. Satan unmask. Satan unmask. And Satan is no problem for the heathens. He has them. Satan is a problem for the kingdom. And the kingdom has a serious infestation of satanic rats that are running wild within the kingdom and we refuse to exterminate them. Mm. Well, here comes the hell. Here comes the hell. Because we're going to raise this up. Jesus. Are we ready? All right, now, to, 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 to confirm what I just said, let us go to Acts chapter number 13, verse number 40, because there has to be a correlation between the prophet and the apostles, because the apostle is first and the prophet is second. So there is a word and then there's an a reinforcement of the word prophetically, but first there is a proclamation and a declaration that comes from God. And then there's his seers and his ears that goes forth, and the word there is discernment. 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 To be able to discern. Discern. Okay. So uh, we have it. We have uh, uh, Acts chapter number 13, verse number 40. It says what? It reads, Beware therefore, lest that come upon you, which is spoken of in the prophets. Now, what was spoken of in the prophets? What was spoken of in the prophets is Habakkuk chapter one, verse number five. So the, 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 the apostles now goes back and is telling the New Testament church what happened in the first century amongst the Old Testament prophets. Read it again. Beware, therefore, lest that come upon you which is spoken of in the prophets. Beware therefore, lest it come upon you, which is spoken of in the prophets. And what's spoken of in the prophets is that they are people who have the characteristics of demons that are walking among you. They're evil spirits. They have an attitude. Watch this verse here. Read. Behold ye despisers and wonder and perish. Uh-huh. For I work a work in your days, a work which ye shall in no wise believe though a man declare it unto you. Now stop right there. So he's now saying the very same thing that we read in Abeka 1 and 5 is now being read in uh, uh, Acts chapter number what? 13, 41. Mm -hmm. Watch this. And when the Jews were gone out of the synagogue, 
the Gentiles besought that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. Mm -hmm. Now, when the congregation was broken up, many of the Jews and religion proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, who speaking to them persuaded them to continue in the grace of God. And the next Sabbath they came almost the whole city together to hear the word of God. But when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy and spake against those things which were spoken by Paul, mm -hmm. contradicting and blas blaspheming. Mm -hmm. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said. Now, now, where did we read that? Where did we read that in Habakkuk? We read that with eagles that were hastened to feed. Okay. When they saw the multitudes coming mm. together, they were jealous and they went and began to speak evil about the word that was already spoken. Mm. I hear Bishop saying stuff like that, but let me, let you, let me come here, come here, come, come, let me talk to you for a minute. Now, I, I, I hear what he's saying, but it could also mean this too. Well, first of all, Bloom are not talking here. We talk about the word of God. Amen. I'll let you know when my opinion comes in here. We're talking about the word of God now. And so they're not picking flesh off of Bloomer. They're mm -hmm. picking flesh off of God. The Bible says they crucify him afresh. Here we go. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, it was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you. But seeing ye put it from you and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. Yeah, said, 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 we told, told, told you, but you didn't believe it. So what we did, we went to the heathens. Mm. We went to the heathens and the heathens are now being converted and you got a problem with this. Mm. Here we go. For so hath the Lord commanded us saying, I have set thee to be a light of the Gentiles that thou shouldest be for salvation unto the ends of the earth. Uh -huh. And when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the word of the Lord. My God. And as, and as many as were ordained to eternal life believed. Wow. And as many that was ordained to eternal life believed, which means that God, through the Holy Spirit, had drawn the individuals to hear this word who had already been pricked in their hearts. You can't turn people that God hasn't turned. Amen. He turns them. And then he commands you to confirm what they're feeling in their hearts. All right, Satan unmasked. So let's, let's, uh, let's, 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 let's go there. Uh, um, uh, uh. So Bishop Bloomer, are you saying that there are people who are around uh, uh, um, that are like uh, uh, not only demon possessed, but demon like? Absolutely. I'm not telling you that. The Bible is telling you that. This is a wicked generation that has come up and they do what demons do. Now, I'm going to free some of you that are on the line right now. You've housed some of these kind of people in your house. We had a woman who uh, who goes from house to house to house to house, taking over people's houses. So she possesses the house and everything that goes on in the house. King, you remember there was one woman that uh, moved into a, a, a lady's house and was trying to get her to turn her whole house over to her. Remember that? Yeah, she called, she texted me and told me the whole, yeah, yeah. And she was trying to move her whole family to the house. <laughs> this spirit goes on all, all, all the time. Uh, in, in our early days, when our church first started, a woman moved into your house and then joined yeah. our church. She yeah. had that kind of spirit on her and working around with a shirt that says, don't get hung by your tongue. And yeah. I said, to, I said to King, I said, she's a witch. Right. This, 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 this is serious business, how they move into your house and then control your whole house. Now, what does a demon do? A demon moves into your spirit and controls your whole spirit. So the Bible says they take land uh, they, they, they move out and they take land that is not their own. So he's talking about the same thing that the demons do in the spirit. There are people who do that in the natural. These people, first of all, they win you. You know, you, you drop your discernment. You know, you got your strong discernment and stuff like that. But then they come and they come real spiritual, love God, and they do all the right thing. They pray and they pray in the spirit and and they and you know you know they, they say all the right words intercession and and thus saith the Lord and but then it's just it's just a mass and then when they get in the house all they take all it off and what they really are is, is revealed. 
Now, why is the person that allows them in can't see it? Because uh, I don't think they are uh, maybe experienced, maybe haven't had experience in the area. Or deserve. I, I think the reason why they can't see it is because what the scripture says, they they think that everyone around them is pure. pure. Yeah, to uh, to the pure, all all things are pure. That's, that's true. The, that's the trap of the of the text. And so, what God did to men like me is give me a corrupt life lifeline, so I'm now able to discern in my transformation about being redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I can still see the crooks. <laughs> I can see them. Say, eh, no, no, that's not going to work. That's 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 off. Uh, we've had times when we were doing things. There was the, when when the drama ministry was up and going. There was a lady. She was sewing and doing type of thing. You said you said came to me. You said Bishop. You started laughing. Why are you laughing? All right, I know what you're gonna say. Go ahead. Yeah, <laughs> she, she said, she, she's wonderful. I said, I said I turned to you. I said she ain't gonna be here long. Yep. She, she, that, 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 that's the spirit right there. No, no, Bishop. But she she's not. And she and I said, listen, it was it wasn't three weeks. Mm -hmm. Well, in three weeks, I can I, I can pull them out. I can pull. Them, I can see them. Mm -hmm. I don't bother them, but I can see them. Uh, no, don't do that. P push that there. Don't give that too much. Don't give weight. It's called discernment. And these new and these are people. They come. They try to unearth people that has been there fifty and sixty years that you know, and they only been there two weeks, and they come speaking evil against those those people trying to trying to dismantle them. Mm -hmm. that's, the, that's the whole plot. That's the truth. Tears sown amongst the wheat. What an afternoon today. What an afternoon today. What, a, what an afternoon today. And then they have, and then they'll have you qualifying yourself to people that you've been, you have to say, wait a minute here, come here. Mm -hmm. How long have we been together? Why are you asking me this about me? Mm -hmm. whoa, 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 wait, 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 wait. How long we been together? What we been doing here? You looking out the corner of your eye at me? How did that happen? And you gonna tell me that demons only operate in the spirit realm? You out of your mind. You out of your mind. That ain't no act of no spirit. That is physical. And it's an attitude. And time plus time equals influence. And that's how those forces are working. All right. Uh, Shirley, you're going to say what? I was going to say, I have wrote down on my paper. I had I had the, um, the book pulled up and I got this little blue piece of paper stuck on the end of it and it's stuck on Satan Unmasked. So I had wrote down- um, That's the day before we, did, before we went into Satan Unmasked. Yeah. Yeah, I had it. I just did it about 2.30, 3 o'clock today. Wow. And and then I made this note. And the note I had made is that we should have a goal for deliverance from wrong thinking. Because wrong thinking is taking control of our words. It's taking control of our thoughts. It's taking control of our actions. So there's really no peace within. And we keep setting ourselves up in different places that we don't have any business setting ourselves up as. And I made this statement and I said, you can't live beyond what you believe. That on, on warfare college, so much wisdom has been released. And the Bible says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, but the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. So we don't have the knowledge and we're not getting the wisdom that's already laid out because we are getting caught up so easily in the devices of the enemy. Can you just hold the papers up? What you did? This, I mean, that's what I was, I, she, she, she just said what I wrote on my paper before it started. I said 95% of our battle takes place in the mind. Fear, depression, doubt, low self-esteem, what people are saying, rejection. Uh, it, it's in the mind. You know, he ever heard a saying people people say your my mind is playing tricks on me. Your eyes see your mind is 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 a, is a is a is a like a motor machine. Whatever your eyes see, your mind interprets what you see. Your ear, your nose is smelling, but your mind is telling your nose what it smells. Your ear hears, but your mind is interpreting 
your hands touch and it's your mind telling you what you are touching. But what happens when your mind is contaminated? And you have you ever walked up on somebody and said, mm, I thought you were so-and-so, your eyes saw, but your mind went back and, 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 and said, you look like somebody else. When then you walk up to them, that person look at you and say, oh, oh, I thought you were somebody. It's your mind. It, it, it's, it's, a, it's a contaminated mind. So, and then your mind is always telling you, I mean, the people talking about you and, 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 and you know, you see two people talking, your eyes see two people talking. Your mind is telling you they're talking about you. And, and then now all these other feelings of low self-esteem. Well, that's what happened when I was coming up. I was a little girl and someone that was in the corner talking. They said, your mind, your mind is just going all, it's playing all kind of tricks. So all the deliverance it takes, it needs to take place right here. And all this other stuff, low self-esteem will go away. Fear will go away. All this stuff will, will go away. If we can just clear this contaminated mind, this contam if we can clear this contaminated 10 inches right here, this little 10 inches right here, however long, mine is a little bit bigger than, than most people, so maybe 12 inches, 13 inches. But if we can clear this, then in our area, our, our life will become straight and pure. This is amazing. This is amazing. Okay. See, uh, we keep putting ourselves in, in jeopardy, and we wonder why God isn't doing this or why... God's already done what he said he's going to do. It's us because we're putting ourselves in, in jeopardy. We just, we can't even live a certain way because of our own belief system. He's promised us this. He said this, but our belief system, until we can get delivered from that belief system, then we're going to have these battles we go up against unnecessarily because he's already told us what we should do. So that's our goal, to get delivered, like Overseer said, from this wrong thinking, from these evil thoughts. How can, how can somebody have that much to think about me? They don't even know me. Mm -hmm. Why? Why? Why am I the center of a church? Why would I think that? God's made these promises to us. We don't have the fear of God. We definitely don't have the fear of God because if we had the fear of God, well, then we would have the understanding of who he is and who we are. Then mm -hmm. all the, here would be the ripple effect of things beginning to line up. And what happens when we go to a psychiatrist? We lay on the couch or, like, uh, or we sit in a chair and we just start talking and he's listening and we're talking. We're talking, you got all this hatred built. He's trying to figure out why do you have all this hatred? Now you're just talking. And so now as you're talking, the psychiatrist is sorting things out, put, putting this in this column, this in this column, this in this column. So, but, but what we have done before we came there, we got hatred towards one person, but we let that hatred spread out all over everywhere. We, we're taking it out on the people on our job. We're taking it out on our pastor, but really your hatred is against your mother-in-law, you know? <laughs> You know, it's something that is over here, but what we have to compartmentalize it. Well, we don't... And one of the things we have to um, uh, say, being that we brought up psychology, mm -hmm. psych, psych, mm -hmm. psychology, mm -hmm. we have to bring up that psych most psychologists, although I'm not against psychology, but most psychologists, are uh, uh, their, uh, their counseling ability and skills comes from a secular humanistical uh, basis, which means that even though they help you, psychologists a lot of times are skilled in helping you to believe that you can fix yourself. And that's demonic also. Mm -hmm. You follow what I'm saying? So they try to help you to fix your, what happened when you was a little girl? How does that feel? How did that, blah, blah, blah. And then you go into the process of fixing yourself. Yeah. And uh, he that thinketh he is something when he is nothing, he what? You <laughs> see <laughs> his self. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so um, let's go to uh, 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 Satan Unmask. You have it, Evelyn? Yes, sir. Okay. Here we go. Let's see if we can get it up on the screen. Here we go. All right. Second Corinthians 11 and 3 reads, but I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve. So let me just say, let me let, let me just say this, and then so I can be clear, and then I'll leave. <laughs> then I'll leave it alone. Yes, sir. <laughs> let me just say, I, and I'm laughing, but I'm not laughing. I'm, I'm I'm laughing because I'm proud. I'm proud of all of y'all. But uh, how you started off, you know, 
2 Corinthians 11.3 reads, when up at the top it says, but fear you not, and then at the end of it it said, so I appreciate how you brought that text out. And it just made me laugh because <laughs> years ago you wasn't like that. <laughs> No, I was not. This is great. Yeah, I'm just saying. I, yeah. What's what? What King? What are you laughing at? Yeah, he's like, yeah, he won't like that years ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this is this is really, 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 really good. All of y'all, I'm I'm really, really proud of you. That's why when uh, that's why this, uh, next week we're not going to have. It. I was I was not going to allow the devil to manipulate me. And pushing off with something when I know what God spoke to me about what we got to do as a group. I'm going to let the devil yes, do that. So that our, 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 our clerk day is going to be uh, the 7th of, of November. It gives okay. us some time to do the whole, uh, uh, whole, the, the, the whole thing together. Excellent. All right. Um, but let's do it again. Here we go, Evelyn. I'm sorry, Second Corinthians. Let's make me proud. I'm a proud dad. Well, thank well, it's you. It's funny, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> yes, sir. Second Corinthians 11 and 3. But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Now, this is a powerful, powerful scripture. And, um, um, and I'm going to give this scripture to Adelia because this is a mm. powerful one. Okay, this is, this is, this is a powerful one. It's a very, very powerful one. And I'm going to give this scripture to Powell. Those two need this scripture. Oh, my God. But I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through the what? Through his what? What is that word there, Evelyn? Subtlety. Subtleties. Mm -hmm. What is that word there? Subtleties. I got it. The Apostle Paul says, I fear that by any means that the serpent who beguiled Eve through his subtleties. What's the definition of that? The quality or state of being subtle. Um, something subtle. Mm -hmm. yeah. But the acronym there is what? Synonyms. Synonyms. Um, craft, craftiness, cunning. Mm -hmm. Cunningness, foxiness, um, gal. Now, 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 let's look at the word foxiness because foxiness is that the foxes don't take the fruit from the top of it; they tunnel under and pull the pull it down from the roots. From the roots, so when the, when the fox gets you, you ain't got nothing to stand on. That's a fox. Mm -hmm. There we go. Okay. Uh huh. So he says, uh, by the subtleties, so your mind should be corrupt from the what? Simplicity. Simplicity. Mm -hmm. That is in Christ. So he's saying this, he's saying this, that it's the simple things, the simple things, simplicity of Christ that is making it hard for people to worship God. They make it so hard when it's so simple, so hard when it's so simple. Here we go. So far, we have looked at the earthy origin of astrology and some of the devil's rituals, subtle propaganda and lust that propel it. But to get a better understanding of why people would be led to use such practices, we must look at the spiritual roots of witchcraft. And to do this, we will turn to the books of Isaiah and Ezekiel because it is only there that we receive a glimpse of Satan's earliest days. Isaiah 14, 12 through 14 reads, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Thus saith the Lord God, thou sealest up the sum full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardius, topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the zasper, the sapphire, the emerald, 
and the carbuncle and gold. The workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created till iniquity was found in thee. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore, I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Thine earth was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities, by the iniquity of thy traffic. Therefore, will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee. It shall devour thee, and I will bring thee to the ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee. Ezekiel 28, verses 12 through 18. Satan's origin. In these passages of scripture, only can mankind find both the origin of Satan and his origination of sin. Sin took root in the spiritual realm when Satan sought to exalt himself above God Almighty. Isaiah said he was Lucifer, the bright and shining one who wanted to exalt his throne above the stars of God. Ezekiel said he was the anointed cherub, an angel class of being which sealed in the wisdom and beauty of God that his beauty lifted him up and corrupted his wisdom and that God cast him to the ground before, because of his iniquities. From these scriptures, we can see that Satan was a worshiper and servant of God who rebelled to receive God's worship for himself. We see Satan attempting this again with Jesus in Matthew 4 and 5, during Christ's temptation in the wilderness. Then the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and saith unto him, all these things will it give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then said Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship, not worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Satan took Jesus up to a very high place, just as he led earth's people up in the Tower of Babel in Genesis 11. We can also see that Satan offered Jesus power, wealth, and glory, if he would only worship him. Of course, none of what Satan promised Jesus would have ever been fulfilled. Neither do his promises prove true to those who believe and worship him today through the practices of witchcraft, astrology, voodoo, and other wicked acts. Why? Because Satan is a liar. Listen to Jesus' word about him in John 8, 44. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own for he is a liar and the father of it. To those who are foolish enough to follow him in witchcraft, Satan gives them just enough power to keep them loyal. But in the end, he kills them and will share their company in the fiery regions of hell. Matthew 25 and 41, then shall he also say unto them on the left hand, depart from me, ye cursed, even everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. Ephesians 3, I'm sorry, Ephesians 2 and 2, Paul identifies Satan as the prince of power of the air or the lower atmospheric regions of breathable air. Jude 6 tells us that some of the angels left their first estate. And when we think of an estate, we think of a home or dwelling place. So from these passages, we can conclude that these angels were ousted from God's holy mount in the third heaven. Most believe they are wandering just above our atmosphere in Oremos, the second heaven, seeking to invade at will where they can. When Satan attempted to take over heaven, his main motive was to be like the Most High. This means he wanted to receive praise and worship as God did. Since he had communed with God and learned many things, he felt he knew just as much as God did. Lucifer was the brightest angel but his arrogance blinded him to the fact that God's light was brighter than his. So he ascended above the first heaven, but he didn't realize that God had a third heaven and that his condemnation confined him to the second heaven where he now resides. 
Job reveals Satan as a presence walking about the earth. See Job 1 at verse 7. So we know that Satan is mobile between heaven and earth, but he is not omnipresent as he would try to have people believe. In other words, he can only be in one place at one time. So he needs his regions of falling angels to assist him in his cause. The fallen angels, which are demons, in Lucifer's kingdom are assigned to certain areas. This can be seen in two passages of scripture found in Daniel and Ephesians. Daniel 10, 13, then said he unto me, fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and 20 days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, and I remained there with the kings of Persia. The prince of Persia is the chief demon assigned to see that evil deeds are carried out on earth in Persia. This demon and his forces of the area see to it that Satan's will is done when men worship them. But when the saints of God begin to pray and bind these forces, God sends forth his angels to war against them to stop their evil deeds. Ephesians 6 and 12 gives us the different rankings of the forces of Satan. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Ephesians 2 verses 2 and 3 sheds more light in this area. Wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and where by nature the children of wrath, even as others. In this powerful passage, Paul is teaching that before we were born again, we are born again. The devil controls our actions because his spirits are working in us. But he is much more sophisticated than his lower forms of control would have most people think. When he enslaves a person in the very noticeable practices of Satan worship and witchcraft, many can see his obvious ways. But his highest form of deception comes very subtly and works in more sophisticated ways through respectable people and even religion. Stop and think about it. Men and women in backward collars who oversee congregations in beautiful church buildings and teach against the blood of Jesus are more deadly than voodoo or witchcraft. So are greed-driven businessmen who destroy their competitors. These are much more sophisticated lies. Add to that the crooked politician who says one thing and does another, and the oppressive government that abuses human rights. And Satan shines his best in accepted disguise. Many who buy into newspaper horoscopes have no idea they are buying into their control by the signs of the stars and that the devils behind the stars are working within them. But one thing can lead to another and many move up to higher levels of Satan's deception in their quest for spiritual power. It is when Satan is subtle that he is most dangerous. To make this point, I want to share again the testimony of a woman who was ensnared by a TV psychic hotline. Also included in my book entitled, Oppression Less, I'm sorry, Oppression Less. Her experience provides a timely revelation of Satan's modern subtle ways. Do you want me to keep going? A few more pages. Uh -huh. Dial one. 900 Psychic Celebrity TV. I doubt if you have ever called one of these lines yourself or that you will ever call one again once you hear how this woman's innocent desire for hope and information brought Satan into her life. One night while up channel surfing on the television, I stumbled upon one of the psychic network shows. I quickly turned away from it, but I turned right back to it because the psychic on the screen had tapped into things that intrigued me. This began a weekly habit of calls with bills of $10 to $20 per week, which would eventually increase as my desire for more information increased. As time went on, I dialed more and more numbers and paid more and more money because for me, this meant more in-depth information. Finally, at about the third level of my seeking, 
I heard a very pleasant voice on the other end of the phone that I immediately felt a closeness to. She gave me a strange kind of knowing within and I felt I could trust her with the deepest depths of my innermost secrets and soulish desires. The psychic's name was Crystal. And as I gave her my time, money and ear, she told me all there was to know about myself. Upon answering my call and introducing herself, Crystal first asked me my date of birth. Then she asked me to repeat my name three times. 10 minutes into the conversation, I was hooked. I was totally in awe of things being revealed to her concerning my life. And the accuracy of this woman who just a few minutes earlier was a total stranger astounded me. Crystal knew of the 14 year old abused teenager I was when growing up and of the 33 year old who had lost almost everything including her mind. I had lost my family in a fire that was ruled as arson, and I wanted to know why and who would, who would leave me without a family. I lost my mother, my brother, my husband, and my seven-month-old baby. Depression had set in on my life, and I was about to lose my mind. The nightmares were the worst. I dreamed of my husband in the fire calling out my name, and as I reached for him, he disappeared in the smoke and flames. Watching mothers with their small children became torment for me because I longed to cuddle the baby I tragically lost. And although I wanted to mother again, I also longed to be mothered. I longed for someone to provide the same comfort I so missed from my mother. So in my desperation to find answers, I was willing to try just about anything that would give me liberty and bring back life as I had once known it. Crystal provided me with the answers I felt I needed to restore my life. And the more I spoke with her, the more I felt anxiety building up in me to continue speaking with her and gaining her insights. So fascinated and intrigued was I that my heart palpitations increased with excitement. My palms became sweaty as I spoke and I found myself approaching every new call as an addict going after the next fix. Soon my life revolved around the counsel and direction of Crystal's insights. And before long, I couldn't even consider taking a decision without consulting her. Crystal eventually told me that by providing her with my phone number, she could introduce me to a psychic counselor who could better help me with some of the unanswered questions that still plague my mind. Seven years of black magic. I gladly received Crystal's offer and I agreed to make contact with this local psychic counselor. In fact, I was excited because now I had become totally engrossed in the mysticism of the psychic realm. My visit would plunge me into seven years of black magic, necronancy, heavy satanic enchantments, praying to ancient spirits, and even eventually joining a school for witches, from which I graduated with honors before joining a witch's coven. All of this began from a TV psychic hotline that seemed to be so innocent. My minor fascinations with horoscopes, palm readings, or anything mystical that would catch my attention had finally turned into this. Once a part of the coven, I learned of a power that I'd never known I had, and I was fascinated by it. I had the power to make people do things against their will, and I loved it. As I progressed, I learned to administer my power of control through spell castings, love potions, hate potions, separation and accident potions. I could even look into the heart of an individual and tell what they were thinking, then use that information in controlling their lives. Hmm. This practice of oppression, manipulation and witchcraft ruled and reigned in my life for seven years. Then one night, a girlfriend of mine who was one of those born again, Pentecostal tongue talking believers invited me to a tent meeting to hear an evangelist. He was one of those who claimed to have the power of God to cast out demons. At first I declined her invitation, but everyone in town was talking about this man. So I eventually decided to go. When the evangelist called me out of the crowd at the meeting, the demon that had taken up residence in my body for seven long years, didn't intend to give up easily but it was so matched against the authority and blood of Jesus. And as the man of God prayed and commanded it to come out, I was set free. The preceding testimony is not only one of deliverance and liberty 
but is also a commentary on Satan's deception in one of his most popular mass media forms. This woman whose circumstances drove her to a pressing depression was also driven to connect with Satan through his deceptive offers of hope. You may say, I'd never call one of those numbers and you probably wouldn't, but this woman did. And so have many others, even within the church because it's out there on the television set and in magazine ads in soaring numbers. I mentioned this simply to show oppression's new high-tech psychic outreach and to warn you about what it can do to a life. The evangelist who came to this woman's town was me when I was led to call her forward the night of the meeting. I had no idea of the battle that was awaiting me. Seven years earlier, she was lonely and struggling through the horrible tragedy of her family's death. But now she stood before me, a demonized convert of Satan's lowest order of blatant open worship. While speaking into her life as the power of God overwhelmed me, this woman's entire countenance and demeanor transformed before my eyes. Her head was bowed down. Then as she slowly lifted it, I could see Satan's hate within her eyes. The demon was letting me know that he had overtaken her and was not going to come out just because I said to do so. Her eyes peered at me with the most gruesome satanic force I had ever seen as the voice of her demon spoke to me. You come to do war with me, you drug addict, the demon hissed. The oppressor sought to oppress me through my failure of my past. And when he did, I'll admit that the fear gripped me, but God was in control. And he began to remind me in a powerful way that this fight had nothing to do with me. So I stood in the authority God had given me, looked this demon right in the face and proclaimed, I was once a drug addict, but I am no more. I've been bought by the blood of the lamb and in the name of Jesus, I command you to come out. Realizing that he was defeated, this demon screeched a horrifying scream and immediately came out of this woman. She is now ministering the word of God and is being used to bring deliverance to hundreds of people who were bound as she once was. Oppression had bound her in a witch's coven and it all began through a seemingly frivolous TV psychic hotline. Are you following me? The TV psychic she spoke to separated her from any potential counsel except the psychic counselor who eventually led her to personal contact with a satanic cult. Keep going. Satan ways are subtle. This woman was among those dear people mentioned earlier who are ripe for Satan's picking when they are exposed to the magic kingdom and DTV. You have never heard of one of them unless it happened to someone you know or to a member of your own family. And it probably couldn't be proven in court that a Walt Disney movie watching Bewitched and Night Gallery 52 weeks a year, or listening to a KISS album had anything to do with a child's suicide or school shooting incident. This is because Satan ways are subtle. Ignorance and intrigue are his primary tools. If a person has any knowledge of God's word at all, Satan will seek to twist its meaning to the point that it becomes of no effect to that person. Oh, God's word is full of grace, he whispers. You can go into that bar, punch up that pornographic web page, play around on your wife, deceive your employer. After all, God doesn't know your real needs. And the Bible does say he will forgive you every time. Newspapers and over 1,900 phone lines. Witchcraft can be taken as an elective at certain universities. And Satan's new age religion of sophisticated witchcraft is drawing millions at the highest levels of government as they gather in the halls of power to gaze at crystals, cast their mantra, mantra spells, empty their minds through yoga, and engage in sexual perversion at precedent levels. Second Corinthians 11 and 3, but I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Satan's ways are subtle, subtle until his victims are trapped. It is only then that he reveals his true nature and lower forms of worship in his witching craft. 
Of course, the born believe, the born again believer who knows the truth of God's word and has received the power of the Holy Spirit has nothing to fear of the devil. Because Jesus said, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Luke 10 verses 18 and 19. Serpents and scorpions are prophetic representations of Satan and his demonic host. It was the serpent who tempted Adam and Eve in Genesis 3. And Jesus's connection of them in this passage makes the symbolism complete. In chapter six, we'll look some other ways in which Satan uses his witching crafts to hold people in bondage, sometimes for many generations. You did great reading that. Great, 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 great. All right. First Timothy chapter number four. Now the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter time, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits, speaking lies and hypocrisies, conscience seared with an hot iron, forbidding to marry, commanding to abstain from meat, which God has created to be received with thanksgiving of, of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good, nothing is refused if it's received with thanksgiving. For, for it is sanctified by the word and prayer. If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nurtured up in the word of faith and of God's doc of good doctrines, hitherto thou uh, has been obtained. Uh, it says, but verse number seven says, but refuse a uh, profane and old wise fables and uh, excuse thyself rather unto, exercise thyself rather unto godliness. The bodily exercise profit little, the godliness profits unto all things, having the promise of life that is now is and is which that, that is now and the life which is to come. All right, now after you do that reading, I, I went to First Timothy's chapter number four, uh, verses one through, uh, one, one through eight. Um, okay. uh, it said, it said uh, now the spirit speaketh expressly, uh, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing wow. spirits and doctrines of devils. Devils, doctrines yes. Teachings, uh, uh, the uh, um, uh, speaking lies. Speaking lies. Hypocrisies, having their conscience without eye. Okay, now, um, we, we, we read uh, the warfare ecology, a claim of how people are drawn into uh, those those curious arts and what have you. And I think it would be good for us to uh, lay out what uh, the Bible says about witchcraft, sorcery, divination, etc. cetera. So uh, um, uh, the Bible teaches us that there are three basic principles to all theology, Christ's virgin birth, his sinless life and the resurrection. Now, if you don't know nothing, if you don't know nothing, if you know those three things and you stick to it, you'll have peace with God, Christ's virgin birth, his sinless life, and the resurrection. If you take away any one of those three, you immediately slip into an occult. So the litmus test on whether a religion is solid and, 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 and is of God is that any spirit that testifies that Christ is not God or is not the spirit of God, that is of the Antichrist. Now, Antichrist doesn't only mean against God, but it also means another. So the Jehovah Witnesses is an Antichrist movement because they have another God. Uh, the Mormons is an Antichrist movement because they have a another God. The Muslims is an Antichrist movement because they have a another God. Now, some of the people say, oh, but Farrakhan talks about Jesus as a prophet, not as the eternal son of the living God and as God in the flesh because Elijah Muhammad <laughs> has that position because he is the other. Okay, good. So um, the uh, I wanted to just understand those three principles, which brings us into the occult. 
the, 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 the occult. If you say that Christ wasn't born of a virgin, you slip into the occult. If you say that he sinned, he didn't live a sinless life, you slip into the occult. If you say he didn't get up from the dead, you slip into the occult. You slip into the occult, okay, immediately, all right? Now, there are three principles to Satan's operation. It is witchcraft, sorcery, and divination. Witchcraft, sorcery, and divination. Divination is the fortune-telling realm of the spirit. It works through uh, gazing through crystal balls, water gazing, tea leaves. Uh, uh, um, 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 it works through Ouija boards. It works through horror movies. It uh, so many things: tarot cards, palm reading, uh, etc. Fortune cookie, uh, fortune cookies as decrees for your life. All those kind of things. Okay, um, um, divination uh, uh, is the fortune telling realm of the spirit. Um, sorcery uh, works through uh, um, sorcery with the word of pharmakia or pharmakite, some people may say, which means pharmacist. So it works through drugs. It works through the burning of incense. Uh, uh, the uh, um, the uh, um, it works through uh, 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 therapies, oils. It works through uh, uh, enchantments, etc. And then you have witchcraft, which is more powerful than all of those because you don't have to uh, use drugs. You don't have to burn sage or lavender. You don't have to take all baths to do witchcraft. All you have to do is intimidate, manipulate, or dominate. It has three uh, bases that is connected to it. Uh, so you can, you can be in a church, say sanctified, Filled with the Holy Ghost and still operate in witchcraft. Yes, and operate in witchcraft because in witchcraft is intimidation, domination, and manipulation. And there's a lot of people who are filled with the Holy Ghost who needs deliverance from manipulation because that's what they do. Now, remember, we're still looking at Acts 13 and 40 and Habakkuk 1 and 5. So there is a God-given nature that is born in some people who are born manipulators, born control freaks, born intimidators. And that's where regeneration comes in because regeneration means regene. It means that you have to be rewired in order to give yourself to God. Okay, now you're not gonna come in contact. You're not gonna come in contact with a a with a an anointed man or woman of God, that those three areas does not fight to invade. Every apostle, every prophet, every evangelist, every pastor teacher, uh, there's a spirit that is trying to possess us, and it is either intimidation, manipulation, or domination. It's not always sex. It's not always drinking. It's not all because the spirits know some of us ain't gonna do that. But that manipulation but that intimidation, but that domination. And why it is so important that I teach on this is because um, intimidation, intimidation is the power to which we as deliverance preachers walk in when we walk into a room where there's demons. So you can't, you, you, if, you, if, if, if you're a wimp, ain't no demon, <laughs> they ain't paying no attention to you. No, no. So, so, we, so, so we have to understand that it is God that puts this, 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 this anointing on us that says to you, I'll embrace you, but don't go too far. And the person on the other side sees it as intimidation. And so what they try to do is break us down. And that's when you start seeing Hey, you're touching my anointing. You're touching my anointing. If you have a spirit on you that needs to be served, you have a spirit on you that needs to be served, then you can't have armor bearers because you see, because you are gonna abuse that. <laughs> you, 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 and that's when you walk in with eight armor bearers and you ain't got but 20 people in the church. <laughs> see? So, 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 so now, 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 uh, as cunning as the enemy is, that's as cunning as a man or woman of God is in the spirit realm, because we have to be able to discern and to see 
what others can I say, oh, wait, wait a minute, it's, that's not that, that's this. Sit down, baby, let me share with you so you can understand. How did you see that? Because I came out of this. My deliverance came from this. It started when I was this age and God carried me to this age and here I am. So now what I'm saying is this, is that there's a bad side and a good side. So people come around and say, y'all scared of Bishop. What, why would you say that? So y'all, 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 y'all scared of Bishop. See, that's your problem is y'all scared of Bishop. I ain't scared of it. He, they telling you that. The person who said that, don't come tell me that. You telling you that for? Come to me so I can punch you in your face. Because you need fear. <laughs> because what you're doing to this, this, these people here, they're not afraid of me. They respect me. And you don't have respect for anything. And so you have to break that down because you're intimidated by their respect for me. You can't let people break that. They don't know I'm not scared of Bishop and I'm not going to have that, that kind of conversation with you. I'm not scared of him. But this is what he's asked us to do. And we need to do this in haste. So that has to be defined what the, what, what, because people say, oh, you controlling, you, you trying to manipulate, you trying to, how I'm trying to manipulate in is my car. <laughs> it ain't your car. This is my car. How I'm trying to manipulate and this is my car. You trying to drive. <laughs> you you trying to, you the manipulator. Oh, he controlling, he real controlling. Just don't touch his car. Wait a minute here. Whose car is it? <laughs> Your definition structure is off. Let's be clear about this. This is important for, do you understand what I'm saying? This is important. I done started talking to the sermon, the, 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 the congregation inside the studio. This is important because people will manipulate you into controlling you. They will manipulate you to control you, trick you to controlling you. Now, I had to get delivered from one thing. Now, I'll be honest with you about it. I had to get, I had to get delivered from many things, but in this area, I had to get delivered from this, 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 this piece here. And that is letting people do things for me. I had to get delivered from that because I hated to hear the word no, because coming up, it was always no, and it was never any. And so I worked very, very hard for my own. And even when you're giving it to me, it's hard for me now to receive it. So there were some people who, because they had that information, they used that as an excuse never to do anything nice for me, but to always take from me. That's a manipulation. If you see that I'm being healed from something and you can help in my healing and you withheld, withhold the sab or the bomb or the oil, you are a part of the bondage now. You walk in and become a part of that bondage structure. So here we have, I went to New York City, saw this woman who was inside a, a witchcraft for, for, for a number of, of years. Uh, prayed for her. She got free. Began to she she's gone went on to be with the Lord since now. But um, uh, ministry came up. Uh, did a church on DeKalb Avenue in Brooklyn, uh, New York City. Grew the church to about three hundred people. I mean, they were going, 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 going. Same woman that we're talking about in 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 in, in the book. Husband passed away. Uh, grief came up on her, and she uh, fell in love with a young man about a year after her husband passed away and that whole entire church and ministry got swallowed up. As the serpent beguiled Eve with his cunningness, I am afraid, the apostle Paul said, for you that you not fall to the simplicity of the things of God, making stuff more complicated than it is. And what the Apostle Paul is talking about in that particular text is sex. That's what he's talking about. And the enemy knows how to use that. He knows how to use that on you. And so while we're ministering and, 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 and tell, help, helping people through what you call, what makes our program on Monday work is because we have different ideas and ideology. We got a power 
who is not wrong. We got a we got a we got a Adelia who is not wrong. We got a, we got we got a, a Baxter who is not wrong, but they're all not right either, because what is right for Adelia might not be right for Paul, but it's right. But it's right that the simplicity. See, 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 because Satan makes it, he makes it so simple that it ain't so. Good. All right. And so uh, uh, this great ministry she has, now to me, to me, because people keep on saying about these great big churches, they talk about these great ministers and stuff like that. The average church in America is between 25 people and 150. That's the real numbers in, in, in American churches, Okay. And so, uh, 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 no, 100, uh, uh, 25 to, to, to uh, right, the first, the first set is 100, uh, 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 50, 25 to about 150. The next tier is 150 to about 500. And then the 1,000 churches right in the United States of America is right within the 3,000. This is 300 million people in this country. So mega churches, uh, we may have 30,000 of them in a whole country. We have more than 30,000 churches in Raleigh. In, in the state of North Carolina, so that that that's the that's the seriousness of it. So excelling to be that that's a whole another ball game. So when you grow a church from five or ten people to fifty to a hundred, you've done a great work. And to be able to balance them, what? Because large churches don't have that. <laughs> large churches are social clubs. Okay, let's let's be very very clear about that. Okay. And so, uh, and then to have a man come in and sex you so well that he sex you out of the will of God, sex you right out of the will of God, and your three hundred church go down to eighty people, and then you're not showing up to services, and then you're moving services because this guy is an undercover assignment of Satan to destroy it, and what did he do? He found an area in my friend that was weak and she began to host that thing and they began to operate out of these witchcraft principles again because it came back up. Because remember, that, that psychic thing was working in her and the only way the psychic thing could work in her is that she had a prophetic call on her life in the beginning. That's what attracted her but there wasn't a preacher strong enough to attract her in the beginning, so the psychic was able to get her. That's what's going on. Okay, so that was a lot for today. I talked a long time, didn't I? All right, so uh, let's take a few minutes, unpack, and then we'll go for the offering today. But um, did we learn anything today? Let's talk about some of the things we talked about. Well, you talked about how- um, I feel like I talked a long time. Mm-mm. It was good. It was very good because it. I think it's really going to help a lot of people in church, especially the leaders, because I don't think the leaders really realize sometimes that they are being manipulated and that they can also be that way because they think I'm the leader because I've been through that myself. I've been thinking I'm okay, but then I wind up, I'm realizing I manipulate. And then when it comes around, I can see people manipulating me. I can't move this way because if I move that way, you are gonna say this. But you know, when you get free of all that and you recognize, that's the whole key that we have to recognize what's in operation. We can't just go over it because like uh, I think uh, Overseer was talking about the psychiatrist. You get caught up in that avenue. And I'm telling you, after you get on the drugs and the talking, I mean, you can just call it one on that. You can because you have yourself really open. You have yourself open to the things that are going on all around you, but you also have yourself really open to a demonic realm that you don't even realize that you... Because those drugs are controlling you. Yeah. Then you got all of this. So you got a double whammy. I think this was an excellent lesson today. It presented itself to the body of Christ. Look where I am. Look why I can't go. Because that goes back to my statement. You can't live beyond what you believe. So you don't believe it, then you entertain it. 
And I think more leaders, especially now, and then we're getting ready to possibly start returning back to the church, start doing things creative. We got to be solid because if not, people going to come in and run all over us and we're going to start doing all these crazy things to make it look like it's okay. And we don't. We just got to be flat-footed, do it simple, and that's it. I, I, I agree. Um, you know, um, I, I had a discussion with Overseer about uh, um, a minister who is a minister of a minister within our within our fellowship. Um, I don't have any I don't have any problems with you hearing from God, and I want you to hear from Him. I don't have a problem with God calling you. I do have a problem uh, with you touching sacred things, and there's a few things that are sacred. Um, communion is sacred. Um, water baptism is sacred. Um, the consecration of elders and uh, ministers is sacred. The appointing of deacons, deacons, inductees into the service of the pastor. Those are very, very sacred things. Okay. And um, I have a problem with that. I also have a problem with convocation because um, how you start a church and then within a month or two, or a year, you're having a convocation. A convocation is for what? First of all, you have to be a bishop or an apostle to call a convocation, to call the people together. When you call them together, you call them together for the instructions uh, to get the goal of what you call it, of ministry, uh, uh, new laws, uh, to discuss doctrinal issues about where we are. I came to your convocation uh, year before last. Was last? That was that last year. Year before last. Year before last. In the day session, we had uh, we, we 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 had a doctrinal discussion. It was <laughs> set up that way. We sat down there and we threw things out and we discussed doctrine. What does the Bible say about this? Da 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 da. That's a convocation. That's why we have day sessions where Bishop is up and we do a warfare ecology type thing so we can have a discussion. About, and then in the nighttime, we dance and we rejoice and stuff like that. But, but for the most part, is to come together to set the, the vision and the goal for the year. No local pastor can do that. What? And so we have all these kind of things with people holding our license and our certificates. And we're silent about it. We, what, we, we, we start hearing about this again. And, 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 and you, got, you, you have to learn from stuff because when, when hell hits, people, even people who are not covered, when hell hits, they always look for somebody to cover them. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They don't tell you what they're doing. They don't tell you where they're going. They don't tell you what's going on. But when hell hits, oh, Bishop Bloomer, well, Pat Bishop, you know, wait, Doc, I didn't even know you was doing this. But... I'm called to do what I'm supposed to do. I got to step in. I got to find out what you know, what they know, and how we're going to deal with this situation. But in this hour, in this moment, like you said, we're getting ready to come back. And yeah. we're coming back to something in, 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 in an atmosphere, in the season, in a dispensation that we've never been into before. And it's in this hour, we got to have this thing straight. I mean, we come at, you know, uh, uh, um, I got people, we, we've been out of church for seven months. I got people uh, reaching out to me, talking to me, calling me. When we get ready to go back into the building, these Negroes that didn't reach out and talk to me and blah, 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 I ain't studying them. They, they ain't coming back in here and but no, 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 and standing on the side and being secure. You don't even call me. How are you going to do this? What, 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 what I'm, you know I don't have a problem in talking. I'm I'm, I'm tongue tied. This is <laughs> this is crazy. And so in this moment, I'm calling on all of our bishops and our apostles and to set order amongst these zealous individuals who want to go forth and do ministry. Now, if you want to help me to expand my ministry, and you got the giftings on the inside of you to sing, to preach, to teach, and I hold you back. Woe is on me. Right. I ain't gonna do that. Right. But don't don't bring in foreign spirits that will produce strange fire on the altar. That's all George Bloom is saying. And I'll help you get started. I'll help you move forth. But this is crazy. 
And normally when people do these kind of things, it never goes right for them. It never goes right for them. And I think our postponing of the 10th to the 7th of November has a lot to do with God establishing and setting order in those areas also. Mm -hmm. And those persons who don't come to it, we've, we're done with them because they're just using us to get to where they want to be. We're not trying to block you. We're not trying to stop you. We're not trying to hinder you. But I am, I am at my wit's end when I keep on hearing. I, 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 listen, you, you, got, you, you got guys who are 22 years old wanting to be a bishop already. Then went out someplace and bought the garb. What? This is witchcraft. It is witchcraft. And we got to call it what it is. And we got to straighten it out. My God. We've had the opportunity over the past seven months to be in a reset, reestablish, realign. And we this opportunity, although it's some tragic things, but it was also for the church to come back and really be the triumphant church. And so that meant it was more so even for the leaders so that they can get it together and come back. They don't have the same people that you just don't have them. Go with the vision that the Lord has given you. Go ahead and do what you got to do because it is a great time for the church. Mm -hmm. Awesome time for the church. And you got to be firm. You got to, nobody's trying to hurt anybody or anything like that. But we are moving forward. And there's a group of people that's been standing out there trying to get in, but they didn't want to come in because what they saw out of somebody else. Now that's over. And we just moved that out of the way and let all this group that's ready to come, that's hungry, that said, I'm going to serve, that I'm ready to do this, I'm ready to do this. And we're going to see. We don't, the church is going to rise up and be what the church is supposed to be. I believe that. And I believe that God is holding his hand strong over some of us. And he is saying, you are going to move forth and I'm going to push you forth. I'm going to put you in places that you never thought you'd be. And I do believe that Bishop George Bloomer is one of those people. He's done it one way, but God has established something completely new that he will go shoot like that and the right people will be right there i receive it i think every pastor ah. every i think every pastor and every apostle just got there's got there's a certain test that you're going to have to pass and it's the same test that happened in heaven between lucifer and god when lucifer what happens when your assistant tries to outshine you? You're God. You're the founder. You are the, the you, you are, your name is on the docket. Now you've got somebody assisting you who's winning the congregation. They're not supposed to be winning them for them. They're supposed to be following your instruction, leading them back to you. But what happened, as in Lucifer's sake, he did his thing, and now they're following him. A third of them followed him away from God. Now they're angels, they're fallen, they're demons or whatever. They, they, and they, they started their own church, the church of the first church of demons. And that's what it was because, because it, it was it was supposed to be a, 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 it was supposed to be unity in heaven. So what happens when the person that you trust to reflect you ends up reflecting themselves to the to the people. And then you know you trust them to do something. You trust them to have a little department. Now, now, they, now, about two years later, they start their own church and carry the whole department with them. I mean, the whole wider was with you. They wasn't with you. That's what it said in the Bible. You was you were you was there, but you won't you won't with us. You was here for your own agenda, and you start manipulating. And when the, that manipulation is 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 a is a powerful thing because a lot of times a church can be destroyed by the first person coming to you and you believe in them and not bringing everybody together. They'll come and say, and, and you know, and it sounds so true what they're saying. So, you know, so and so and so did so and so and so. And you say, wow. And, I, and, and, and all of a sudden, you take this person aside. And then when you bring everybody in, it's a whole different story. And so, you know, overseer, I don't believe 
us going back into the church are reestablishing however God is going to allow us to do that. Some of those things that we went through, I don't think God's going to allow it to happen anymore mm -hmm. because the anointing God, no is way. going to be so heavy on some of these leaders, on some of us leaders, that God is going to remove people right out of their midst when they start doing crazy stuff. Remember what Bishop said when he started reading and when he started teaching before, before um, Evelyn started reading and he said, it's an attitude. It's an attitude. So those attitudes that's made us go sit in the corner and say, well, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know. Those attitudes, those demons are not going to be able to get that close. And this is for every pastor that's listening right now. You have wrung your hands. You have went and cried and everything. I call you to rise up today from this teaching Go back, listen to it again, take your time, make your notes into this, feed into this teaching on today, because this is where you're going to move forward to. Those demons that have held you up for 10, 15, 20 years, it's over. It is done. It is not coming near you. Your mind is going to be clear. You're not going to be walking in a fog. It is time for you to rise up and be who you are in the kingdom. I'm not sure. Amen. You don't have no fear. You don't have to be. You don't have no fear. The God that stands with us, my God, we don't have no fear. You don't have to worry. Well, if I do this, everybody going to leave. Bye bye. And I'm waiting to see what God's going to do. You don't have to. This is not what we were called to do. This is not what we were called to do. We weren't supposed to be walking around aggravated, frustrated. We gonna suffer and situations are gonna come in place because it's to grow us up. Mm -hmm. But we, we can't do this. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Woo-wee! Uh, let's receive our offering for the night. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true mm -hmm. we done been through this crap you think God gonna put us back in there and have us mm -hmm. over and carry it? that's over mm -hmm. that's that, that, that. Mm -hmm. we done seen people die we, we, we done seen stuff go this way and we also have seen what God now either we gonna depend on God and look at God as who he is in our life and stop all this foolishness with all this craziness they are demons that's why when people went, that's why when people come around me, I sit back and I look. I ain't got to say nothing. I see what's going on. And it is my purpose always to look at me first and make sure that I can keep my own house clean. The stuff that I'm dealing with, that I keep it clean because there's something greater on the way. I'm trying to find a mic so I can drop it. <laughs> here, 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 here go, here go. <laughs> I mean, it is, I, 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 I just don't know what to say. I just don't, I, I just don't say that we, we have to make sure we have a balance. We have to make sure we're together. Yeah. But let us be very, very clear. Evil spirits are demons and they can also be an evil person. Mm -hmm. Scripture says so. Scripture says so. I remember Roy Parsley said to me, he said, man, I read that scripture. George Bloomer, you must put that in the book. It's been there. I said, it's been there all the time, but I never looked at it. It's right there. It, yeah. Yeah. I remember years ago, this is 20 something years ago, when God uh, gave me the revelation on not only can uh, a demon have you, but you could have a demon. And those preachers in New York say, oh, he's mm -hmm. fired up about that. Huh, you do demon can't have no other. And read the word of God, Bill McKinley said, Boomer, my God, this thing is here. I said, it's right here. It's right here. We can't be, we can't be mad at the person mm -hmm. who doesn't get the revelation mm -hmm. and want to hold on to your revelation or to your your raw letter when the, 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 the scripture is unfolding. 
the definition of evil spirit is attitude. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's transferable. Fallen mm -hmm. angels, evil spirits, it's fallen angels, evil spirits, and demons. Fallen angels, the host that fell with Lucifer, demons, uh, 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 disembodied spirits, and evil spirits, which is attitude, people. And we've all have had a person to come around us and transfer them into us. Absolutely. Walk around all day long, trans transferences of Absolutely. spirits. Of spirits. Of spirits. And the Bible says that this is so clear that 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 that, that uh, uh, it can be transferred sexually. He said, "Know ye not that whosoever lie with a whore becomes one with it." So this is this is this is this is a serious thing. It's 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 it's, it's very very serious. Now, overseer, you have you, you have a testimony or two as we're going into offering. Uh, yes, I, I sure do. I, I was I was I, I, you know you know I can't. It's 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 it's, it's great uh, on Monday. Um, I was watching the relationship show with Dr. Seymour, uh, Pastor Powell, and uh, Bishop Baxter, and uh, they, had, they, they had given the offering challenge. And so I think the, I think the offering challenge was like 88, something like that. And I said, well, let me sew into this. And so, but my cash app somehow locked up and I had to verify it with my debit card. So I'm running, I said, I, so I text Vanita, I said, look, I'm going to, I'm going to sew 88, put my name in the check. So all the while I, I, I I text it, then I'm still running, I'm tearing the house up looking for my debit card. A, a, a Apostle Baxter went to prophesying to me. Okay, I hadn't sold yet. I was getting ready to sell. So I'm looking for my card. I got a safe. I look now, I got two safes. I look in that safe. I said, where's my debit? I need to sell. She's prophesying. At the same time that she's prophesying to me, my phone is ringing. My phone is ringing. My phone is ringing. But I said, I, 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 I got to find my debit card. So I didn't, I didn't answer the call. So I let the phone go to voicemail. So Max is still prophesying. So I looked at the phone. It was Dr. Rosa calling from Florida. I said, huh, okay, Bishop Baxter is still prophesying. So I called Apostle Rose. I said, how you doing? She said, how you doing? I overseer can't say fine. She said, look, she said, I don't know if you have a son or not, but the Lord been, let, been, been on me to pray for your son. I don't know. I don't, I don't know nothing about your, your family structure, but the Lord told me to pray for your son. I said, okay, well, thank you so much. I, I appreciate it. I told a couple of things he went through. He says, okay, well, I'll be praying for him. I said, thank you. That was the extent of that conversation. I hung up, I found my debit card, I verified it, and I sold the $88. Okay. She prophesied. The prophecy was on point. And what God's going to do in my life. I understand all that. I, hallelujah. I, the program went off. I went to sleep. Woke up the next morning. My daughter called. She said, daddy. She said, you know, Junior uh, had to go to the hospital yesterday. I said, really, about what time? It was about the same time that Pastor Baxter was prophesying, the same time that I was sewing, and it was the same time that, uh, uh, that, that uh, Dr. Rosier called me, all that was going on, and he was getting sick at the same time. He passed out and went to the emergency. But see, I didn't find out till the next morning, and I timed it. All of it happened at the same time. So as I was sowing that, this is the truth. This is the truth. As I was sowing that seed, God was orchestrating prayers and aunt, I mean, he was just, he was, he was giving me a word at the same time he was delivering my family. That seed was doing two things. It was, de it was delivering and it was bringing. <laughs> the Woo! seed was delivering and bringing. And so I'm saying, wow, that was, and I called, I said, this is what happened. And I, and I called uh, Apostle Rosa back. I sent her a picture. I said, this is my son that you were praying for right here. And my daughter, nobody knows that I have kids. I have grown kids. I have grandchildren because they only see me. But my, they, they're, they're around. They're around. And they love they, they love me and stuff like that. But they're going, you know. And I, and I appreciate that. But when I sowed that seed, that's what I want to get to. When I sowed that seed, <laughs> God started delivering and he started bringing. And so today, when that seed challenge go forth, everybody that's on this line, that's, this is the month of miracles. This is the month of miracles. God is going to reveal miracles to everyone that's, that's, that's obedient to the voice of the word today. God is going to send you a miracle. Don't be faithless, but believe in what the word of the Lord has said. Whenever you release, God is going to release to you your answer. He's going to release to you your future. He's going to unlock your destiny. He's going to unlock 
He's going to, there's so many things that God wants to do in your life when you obedient and when you release that, because that, that, that seed became intercession for my family. Wow. Mm. That seed became, I didn't have to pray one prayer. It, the prayer was already prayed because of the seed and deliverance came. That's that, that's that 333, mm -hmm. that 333 that releases the double. That's that 333. I want 10 pastors, 10 spiritual leaders, 10 apostles, 10 evangelists, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10 spiritual individuals to trust God on this Thursday. This is the second Thursday in October. Today's the eighth, right? I want you to sow a seed of $333. Spiritual leaders, business individuals, if you already sold $27, make up the difference and bring it up to 333 and sow it. Drop your name immediately. I don't want you to tussle with this. I don't want you to fight with this. I don't want you to prolong with this. Now, something was said today um, while Shirley was talking about how what God is doing and taking us into whole new dimensions and what have you. We're in the season where um, uh, God has taken um, our clerk pastors and put them on a national platform. Remember, every, everything is done. There's no conferences. There's no nothing. Everything is done. This is, this is it mm -hmm. for right now. And uh, can you imagine how he's changed our whole life in, in, I mean, in, in minutes and put us here. I mean, we, well, they're, they're seeing us do this now, but we've always been doing this, but not the world haven't seen this. Can, 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 can you, this is, 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 this is big. It's, 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 it's huge. And, 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 and I'm excited because, I mean, to see, to see, to see Baxter and, and Powell mm -hmm. on the platform with the, with, 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 with the Dahlia, we would, you, in, in, on, on a normal basis, you would never team them up on relationships, mm -hmm. but God would. See, when men plans, uh, that's what Mr. Taylor said, man, man, man plans and God laughs at our plan. We, we have our things already set up. And we step up in that pulpit and the Lord says, okay, now here's what you're going to do. And it works out better all the time. Whatever the frustration is, whatever you've been going through, whatever you've been dealing with, I'm not going to stop this afternoon. I want to talk to you. Look at me. Get that seed of three, 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 three hundred and thirty three dollars for the double for the double and two areas of your life, he is going to release it. Two areas of your life, he is going to release it in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. I don't care if you have to struggle to do this one. You're getting ready to move into a position that is going to be mind boggling and is going to blow your mind. I had planned today that before we started teaching to give the people the opportunity to sow um, uh, into the second Thursday, second deliverance day in October, uh, second Thursday, uh, but the Holy Spirit just took over and we started talking about the attitude and what have you. And it requires a right attitude even when you're coming down to giving, even when you're coming down to giving and coming down to sowing. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I'm waiting on you. I'm waiting on you leaders and pastors first before we go to the masses to, 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 to stand up in faith and release that seed and release that seed. 10 of you, put your name in the chat so we can pray for you in the name of Jesus. But this is it. This is it. Your broke days is over. Your struggling days is over. Every seed that you have in the ground, every seed that you have in the ground. I, I, I told King, I said, we're sowing $777 a day from the time that the... Um, uh, from March, when the Lord spoke it, he said, I want you to sow um, every, every, every day. And I was, you know, trying to tell King what was going on and stuff like that. He said, no, 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 your figures is off, Bishop. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I say, 
Yeah, I said, yeah, because he told me you you said a certain amount. I said, no, that can't be true because uh you sold this on this, these are other offers you sold. You don't even think about these because you're telling me to do it. And I'm so I'm giving and you forgot all about these, and these are in the thousands. <laughs> yeah, every week, and, twice a week. Look what God has done. He's done that. Mm -hmm. He's taken care of Africa, he's taken care of my missions, he's taken mm -hmm. care of the Bethel, what you call it. We're getting ready to get freezers. He's gutting the kitchen. He's doing all the things because we obey him. If you hold it in your hand like this, you hold it in your hand like this, you're telling God, I love what I got more than I'm trusting you for what you're going to give me. And I like how you said it overseer. You said one hand was letting go and the other hand was getting. How did you say mm -hmm. that? He was delivering, he was giving, God was giving, and then he was also delivering at the same time. He was receiving and delivering. Yes, this, 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 it's, it's that open hand in the service of warfare, and it's that closed hand at the throat of the enemy choking him. Choking him. Now, 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 now. and, and, and y'all please forgive me because today I talked a lot. And, and um, but I was sort of kind of I I think Shirley, uh, it, it is it is it's October. It's that it's, it's it's almost that warfare voodoo month mm -hmm. that, that just drives me crazy, mm -hmm. and I know them suckers are doing something. I just oh, don't yeah. know where they at, but I can feel it. And you know, start to get darker a little earlier, and so, so it's, it's, it's the whole and people just going on like it's nothing going on, and we as leaders and pastors are going through oppression and different types of things, and somebody needs to stop long enough and have a discussion about it. Now, the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter days, many will depart from the faith, given into these spirits of seduction, seducing spirits of manipulation and domination and control. And we're telling you, we're not having it. We're not having it. You're going to follow suit and obey God and follow what God is telling you to do so we can be blessed in this hour, in this season, in this year, in the name of Jesus. I'm waiting. I'm waiting right now. I'm waiting right now. I'm waiting right now for those leaders and those pastors. You got pocketbooks that cost more than $333. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. You got wigs that cost more than that. Men of God, yes, yes. You got bracelets and shoes and ties that cost more than $300. Yeah. Everybody don't go to, uh, what, what is it? What do they call it? KNG? Everybody don't go there. <laughs> Let's do this in the name of Jesus. Let's do this in the name in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. This is that moment that you who are in fellowship with pastors call your pastor friend and say, Bishop is on the line. They ministered this afternoon about yokes being destroyed and breakthrough for leaders and for our ministry and for it to come back. And you need to sow XYZ. That's the so that's what I did. That day I called, there was a day I called and said, I'm sowing a seed on behalf of King, but call King and tells King to sow a seed to, to get this word because something is about to happen. And he at home in the, is that my one the first time it happened? That's the, what yeah. happened this week is the second time there because you was home in the bed when your back went out. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Oh, geezer. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's right. I thank God for my, I thank God for my raise. Amen. Amen. <laughs> see, see, ain't that something? And see, 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 people don't. Right. People, they, 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 she didn't know that she was prophesying that that same day I got a raise. I walked up to him. I said, this is what you're going to be. He said, thank you, Bishop. I said, fine. This is what you're going to be receiving. And there wasn't no nickel raise. You know, you go to the job, they give you 25 cents, 30 cents raise. Huh? They give you more like two or three. He's saying, you all excited, happy and stuff like that. You got a raise. You ain't got nothing. Yeah. All right, dollar sign, big guy Bloomer, Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com. PayPal me, GGB Ministries. Text to give, text Bloomer to 844-889-1559, 1559, 1559. Let's go, let's go in the name of Jesus. I'm waiting on 10 persons that are sowing that seed of 333, three, three, of 333. Three, three. Yes, you are, 333. Three, three. And then the masses Get your hands on a seed. You're sowing in two areas. You're sowing 33 or you are sowing. You're sowing 33 or you're sowing Job 42.10. That's what you're doing. You're going to line this thing up in the name of Jesus. I didn't carry the 42.10 uh, offering all the way over into the fall of the prophets 
that's on Follow the Prophets on Friday night. And I carried it into the urgent prophet call with Liston Page on Sunday night. Devil is a lie. And it is working. It is working because it works. Dollar sign, big guy Bloomer, Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com. PayPal me, GGB Ministries, text to give, text Bloomer to 844-889-1559. Uh, um, something happened with, uh, um, we, we never got OJ on the line. OJ, come on in, come, come, come on in. We go to teaching and go to talking, OJ, come on in. Go to teaching and go to talking and stuff like that. And Bishop Bloomer just running his mouth. Dollar sign, big guy Bloomer, Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com. PayPal me, GGB Ministries. Text to give, text Bloomer to 844-889-1559. OJ, you got a shirt on, looks like the kind of shirt that I got. OJ. Thank you, sir. Yeah, you, you heard the program today, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, why you say it like that? It was powerful. It was powerful. It's really uh, mind blowing and uh, very educative. Let's talk for a few moments about uh, 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 um, Benny. How far is Benny from you? One hour. One hour. Driving or flying? Driving. One hour driving in the car? That's it? Benny said Benny, right? Yes, yeah. It's one hour. In the car? Yes, in the car. Wow, I didn't know that. It's close. It's close. But there's like a lot of witchcraft there, right? Yeah. Explain to us. No, there's a lot. There, there, there's a lot. Um, one time when uh, the late uh, Archbishop Benson Delsa was alive, um, the, the, the head of all the witches in Africa, they wanted to have a meeting in Benin. Uh -huh. And um, Archbishop Benson Dawza said, because he's alive, he will not allow that meeting to take place in the city that he lives in. Jesus have mercy. So the um, witch doctors, the head of the of the um, witches, their uh, archbishop and said to him, you cannot stop us. It was a back and forth argument. They were not invited to a national TV. Live on the stage, archbishop, not there, the head of the witches and told him, you said you're going to have this meeting. Mm. If you repeat it again, you will not leave the studio. You will fall down and drop dead right now. Good day. Uh -huh. <laughs> if you repeat that word that you will have this meeting, you will fall down and drop dead right now. Mm. They will carry you. You, you will not leave the studio alive. Mm. God is going to strike you down right here, right now. Mm. And the guy was silent. The guy couldn't speak again and decided to cancel the meeting. <laughs> so that brought a lot of change to Benin City. Yes. There's, there's so much going on. Before that time, there's so much going on before that time. So uh, when, you speak, when you were speaking, I mean, I, I could relate to what you were saying. You know, I had him to lay hands on me as a young man came to do a meeting for us with Shirley Caesar and at, uh, uh, what's the place this, it was called? Uh, Living Waters on 70, uh, Benson Idihosa. Yeah. And, uh, man, and he would go to ORU and meet up with Benny Hen and all, all Roberts and Jesse Duplantis and all of them. And then he came to do a meeting for Kingsley Fletcher mm -hmm. uh, here in town. And the service was going on. People were everywhere. And they put Benson in the car. And Benson was waiting in the car. And Kingsley was out shaking hands. And uh, I was out shaking hands with him. And Benson, I didn't know Africans, how Africans are. And Benson was beeping the horn. Bah, 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 telling Kingsley Fletcher, get in the car. Bah, bah, bah. So I tapped on the window. Bah, 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 bah. And, and Benson looked at me. I said, roll the window down. Said, he rolled the window. I said, don't you touch that horn again. Do you realize that this man right here is the pastor of this church and people respect him? 
don't you touch that horn again. Roll the window up. <laughs> I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't know. So, so Benson rolled the window up, right? So we got into the car. There was a restaurant in town used to be called Darrow's. Remember Darrow's mm-hmm. on, 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 um, on Roxborough Road? It, it, they, they turned it into the old North Carolina barbecue, but years ago it was, anyway. And uh, we got in the car. So we got in the car. Benson was sitting in the car just like this. And he turned to Kingsley Fetch and said, who is this man? Who is this man? And he says, what is that? He turned around, looked at me, he says, you are a powerful man. <laughs> <laughs> you are a powerful man. Oh, I like you. You're not, you, 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 you're fearless. And I said, okay, yeah, 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 you feel this. And I said, uh, he said, he said, now what do, what was you saying? I said, well, here in America, uh, you know, they honor their pastors. And so if you, if, if you do that, you belittle him. And when you're gone, people will treat him any kind of way. And I, so I understand that's different. He shouldn't have made you wait. He said, because with me, I wouldn't even stop to talk to people. I would have came right outside, put the preacher in the car. I would have came right out, got in the car, and we'd have been gone. Or I'd have them bring the car around the back, and we get in the back, and we, we go. But he didn't. He, 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 he didn't do that. And we got, after we got to the restaurant, he says, uh, uh, get, get, get on the, get, uh, uh, kneel down. I kneeled down and he laid his hands on me. And he says, the whole world shall know Judge Bloomer. <laughs> <laughs> the whole world shall know Judge Bloomer. Uh, I was flying uh, to, uh, to Nigeria from London, flying to Nigeria in London. And um, I'm sitting in first class and when I get on the plane, uh, 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 Pastor uh, 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 Ashimalona. Uh, 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 okay, okay, yes. Matthew uh, Ashimalona. Matthew, Matthew Ashimalona. He's on the plane. Bishop, wow, how you doing, Bishop? And I sit down. So I sit down, and, look, and then a woman walks on the plane, and she comes over to me. She says, oh, hi, how are you doing? I said, fine. She says, I would like to take a picture with you. I said, okay, what is your name? She says, my name is Margaret Benson uh, 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 Idihosa. I said, oh. she said, yes, I would like to take a picture with you. I love you. I watch your program all the time. My husband used to talk about you. Can you imagine this on the plane? Wow, 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 yeah. wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, oh, and wow. I'm feeling the anointing of God for preachers and for leaders to stop this for a few moments and recognize that the month of October is going to be a month of supernatural growth and it's not just gonna happen in money. It's gonna happen in all different areas. We're breaking out of scenarios and out of ideologies and out of patterns and out of cultures. And we beginning to accept a thus saith the Lord in our life. And if I can just get them, if I can just get them to begin to sow seed, just get them to begin to sow seed. You know, there's a pastor in there's a pastor in Lagos. I got to get his name. Pastor in Lagos, who heard that we're building a school in in, in Nigeria with for you, OJ. Um, uh, he contacted his daughter and his nephew in Baltimore and in New York City, mm. and told them he's in Nigeria. Told them to go to his account in America and sow a seed to Bishop Bloomer for the school. Wow. And so 2,000 US dollars. Wow. From wow. Nigeria. Now, wow. 1,000 yeah. 1, is equivalent to about 300,000, right? Yes, more, it's like more. Wow. And he yeah. sold two. See, yeah. see, see because when, when faith grips you, now if a person in Nigeria can call all the way to America to tell people to back what George Bloom is doing. And you here in America and you know it, I'm telling you right now in the name of Jesus, these next few minutes are the minutes to sow. Something miraculous and spectacular is about to break on your behalf, but you have got to release this seed right now in the name of Jesus. This is a warfare seed. I decree it and declare it. It is a warfare seed. 10 persons sowing three, 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 three hundred and thirty three dollars. You're sowing that seed in the name of Jesus. So, uh, uh, OJ, witchcraft is real. Yes, it's real. Hmm? Yes, it's real. And do, do, do you realize that we're fighting spirits of witchcraft right now? Um, 
it, it's always been here, most especially in Africa. Most especially in Africa, it's always been here. So it's a, it's, it's a, it's a continuous thing. The, 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 but I believe that I believe that there are negative words that have been spoken against us in the spirit realm to block what we're trying to do, and it can't mm. get done. Mm. Satan is going to lose this battle. Amen. We're going to see the hand of God, and this is not something that we should whisper about. This is something that we should shout it on the rooftop. Devil, Amen. you are defeated, you are a liar, and you will not, cannot, must not win in this hour and in this season. Amen. Ah, shakatada ba. Dollar sign, Amen. big guy bloomer, Zell Bloom at bishopbloomer.com. PayPal me, GGB Ministries, text to give, text bloomer to 844-889-1559, 1559. I'm talking to people right now. In, in, in the medical profession. I'm talking to people right now in the educational profession. I'm talking to people right now in the acting, in the entertainment profession right now. I'm talking to you. I want you to feel the pinch and the squeeze of this word of obedience in terms of releasing your seed in this hour. 10 of you, three, 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 in the name of Jesus. Others are assigned to sow $333. Others are assigned to sow $33. Others are assigned to sow $42.10 in the name of Jesus. Let's get these seeds sown. When you sow your seed, when you sow your seed, say what you believe in God for in the name of Jesus and watch God do the miraculous in the name of Jesus. I'm waiting. And I feel, I feel to say this one more time. I feel to say this one more time. There are a few of you that have already sown and you sold 27, you sold 33, you sold 42, you sold 80, whatever. I don't know what the figures that you sold, but the Lord wants you to do the 333. So sow again and make up the difference. And I want to pray for you before the program ends on tonight in the name of Jesus. My God, my God, my God, my God. Now, um, while they're sowing their seed, let's do a point or two a point or two uh, from the program uh, today that we talked about in, um, in warfare, uh, in warfare ecology. Uh, 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 let's, 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 let's do a point. What, 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 what stood out at you, Overseer? What stood out what, at you, OJ? What stood out at you, Shirley, in the name of what, Jesus? What stood out with me is when um, you said spirits are transferred through conversation. Um, you know, you, you could be feeling okay, but then you, somebody could come to you and can can really, can like dump themselves on you in a conversation. You were happy, you were joyous or whatever, but now you're depressed. It's all because of a, of a conversation and, and how, you know, the Bible talks about how filthy, filthy communication can corrupt good manners. And you could be a wonderful person, but the communication can cause you to, like you could be a person that pays all your bills on time, but then you get hooked up with another person that don't like to pay their bills. Now their spirit then came on you. Now you will become a sloth. And so, and that it's a spirit of transfer. Mm -hmm. Wow. What, what, what I think what stood out to me the most is the definitions that oh, were Shirley, given. Shirley, Shirley, before you go, um, uh, what, what scripture was that? The filthy communication? Corrupts good manners. Yeah, what, what is, it's, what, what's the scripture? Uh, first I find it. 1 Corinthians 15, mm -hmm. 15 and 33. Can you imagine that? Can you can 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 can, can you imagine uh, people just not understanding and misinterpreting scripture when these things are happening right around us and we don't see it? Did you find First it? Corinthians fifteen and thirty three? What is that? Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. All right. So now go a few verses above, two verses above, and two verses verses under. Starting at 31, I protest by your rejoicing, which I have in Christ, Jesus our Lord, I die daily. If after the manner of men I have fought with beasts at Ephesus, what advantageous it me to me? If the dead rise not, let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. Be not deceived, 
evil communications corrupt good manners. Awake to righteousness and sin not, for some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. Jesus have mercy. This is this is this is this is something that we need to um, um, visit again in our warfare teaching, because people don't know um, how the enemy is really really using them by speaking certain words that turns things. Just 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 certain just say things. He said, just say things out of your mouth. Why would you say that? Don't 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 say that. And uh, 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 life and death is in the power of the tongue. But I want to go a little further. Transference is in the power of the tongue. And when your character, when your when your heart is bad, it's just it's 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 it's, it's just bad. And 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 it would be a wonderful thing if we were all doing everything that we're doing for the kingdom. We say that we are, but the kingdom we're not. A lot of people just they just hate on each other. And I pray that that would stop. Filthy communication corrupts good manners yeah. and uh, uh, people say things and do things bad and take a good person and turn them bad and say, you know, she didn't used to be like that. Mm -hmm. You know, is that, is that guy that she's with? We see it. We see the transfer all the time. Mm -hmm. And it was, that was, and, and, and surely that's before the demon takes over. Mm -hmm. that, that's before the demon didn't get there yet. So you can only imagine what's about to happen when a person get possessed. OJ, what do you think about that? Yeah, that, that's powerful. Um, I, I also want to talk about what what uh, uh, stood out for me is the the. Hold, the hold, you, you, you hold, hold yours there. Let's go to Shirley, and then we come back to you. Okay. It was an you excellent lie. lesson. It was an excellent, excellent lesson. And the part that with the lesson that I think is so powerful when um, the scripture, Second Corinthians eleven three the simple things of Christ, how we have made everything so deep and so, and it's just simple. It's just simple. Understanding devil, Satan, and demons, understanding these attitudes that we walk around in, and then understand how all that comes to play into manipulation, domination, and intimidation. It was just an excellent lesson. I wow. Wow. OJ? Yeah, Bishop, what was uh, also stood out for me is uh, the part where you talked about the the uh, which is it could it could be a, a physical appearance. Uh, it could be a physical appearance, you know. Uh, in Africa, when we talk about we talk about demons, we talk about witches. We always have a picture of of uh, people who operate and, and uh, in darkness, who who uh, operate in the night season. So, but when you said that it could be our character and uh, our attitude, it really struck a chord with me. It really, really struck a chord with me. And also um, the, the scripture too of Ezekiel 28, verse 12, 13, most certainly 13 part, whereby the Bible is talking about uh, uh, Lucifer, how he put on, uh, he, he was made with all the precious materials uh, on, the, on the earth, the carbuncle, the gold, the sapphire, the 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 onyx, uh, and the, the 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 workmanship of his tablet and the pipe and his hands, everything. It was made so beautiful, and and he he, he got consumed by the beauty, and uh, decided to take the, the the worship to himself. That really really stood out for me, uh, and I was I was really blessed today. I was blessed tonight. You know, in, the, in, in, in our sword Bible, um, uh, King, I don't know if you remember, remember this or Shirley, I don't remember, remember this. In our sword Bible, we did a comparison between Satan leveling the charges against God and God coming back and saying, this is what you will not do. So in, will. I, in Isaiah uh, 14, he says, mm -hmm. I will exalt my throne. I yes, will, the five I wills. You know, five I wills. And then in Ezekiel, God comes back and says, if you establish your set you up there, I'll bring you down to the ground. If you whatever he said he's gonna do, God says, No, you won't. If you do this, I'm gonna do this plus one. So God adds one more unto him, and men shall narrowly know thee. Um, you God ain't no God is not a wimp, he's not a chump, he's not a punk, he's he not intimidating, you can scare him. So you say whatever you want to say, 
you lock him up for a little while, you put him, he's on a cross, he's bent over with stripes on his back, he's bleeding, he's he's exiled, he's the, he's thrown in a tomb, but it's always like Batman at the end of the episode. <laughs> He rises victoriously. This is this 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 is this is some great stuff. Now, but what you did reveal um, today, what I got from you guys uh, today, is that um, and I'm not throwing off, but that a lot of pastors are not equipped in the area of the deliverance. Yeah. So what they're seeing as taking things kindly, and that the person's just nice and stuff like that. That's where the manipulation comes in at, and 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 um, um. I used to say this, and some people would take it out of context, but I used to say, "Ain't nobody coming up in this church, no warlock, no witch, or nobody coming up in this church, and going to hurt these people or take this thing down." Because I'm the strongest warlock in here. Now you know you say that somebody say, "Oh, he said he a warlock." I don't mean it like that. Mm -hmm. You the re. The reason why FBI people can get terrorists because they do what? They think like them. Think like them. They think like them. When you start praying in the spirit, God is building you up in your most holy faith and giving you the encrypted, classified informations of the kingdoms of darkness. And when you come out of your prayer life, you know things that you don't know in the natural but you know it in the spirit and sometimes you can't even articulate it. But when the person stands up and you go, oh, that's why I was travailing in prayer yesterday. Ah, oh. and it's something happens, something happens. I came to, to Nigeria to preach at a conference. I left Lagos and flew into Wari where I was gonna be in Wari for two days preaching on the plane was a friend of mine's from florida i'm getting on the plane somebody runs up behind me in africa and grabs me and i turn around and i get ready to punch him <laughs> <I'm in Africa. laughs> yeah! like a punch him in the face with bishop and I, say, oh, how you doing? and I hug him we fly in we get into what, what you call it um my group is not there to pick me up yet his group is there OJ is amongst with them and they all walking out and so on and so forth like that. But the people in the airport recognized me from videos and YouTubes and what have you. So it was like, oh, Bishop Bloomer, oh my God, in the airport. I don't know these people. And OJ is there to receive his guests for the meeting. The minute I laid eyes on OJ, it was mm. just something strange. I didn't mm. want anything from him. I didn't know who he was, anything like that. I said, God bless you. He said, oh, Bishop Bloomer. And then the young man said, this is Bishop Bloomer and so on and so forth like that, blah, 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 blah. Good. Uh, I, and um, so I just saw him. I shook him hands. They, they, which girl, told him what hotel we're going to be staying in. And uh, we, went to the, we went to the hotel. We got to the hotel. They went, as the Lord would have it, they went to their hotel. But the hotel they was going to, the hotel I was in had a better buffet. And so they came over to my hotel. And when they came to my hotel, I'm in the lobby again. So we get an opportunity to go and we all sit down and we start eating. And y'all know it's impossible for me to have lunch or dinner or breakfast and not talk about God. I, 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 I get around these preachers. They can't do it. I, I, I can't talk about other stuff. I got, if eventually, I'm talking about God. And uh, there it is. And those preachers was there. And we began to unfold scriptures and so on and so forth. So I asked the pastor on one night, because I was going to be there one more night before I left, can I go over to this other church just to be in fellowship, to go over? And I leave to go. He says, yes. I go over to, to, to OJ's church. And by this time, my heart is being knitted to this man. I don't even know what's going on. And I get there. I walk into the building. I sit down. They got a guest speaker speaking. The guest speaker is up, which call it. Then OJ asks me to say words. And I get up, Ronnie King, to say words. I sing a verse of a song. I say words. I walk over to sit down. There's a preacher who is standing there, and he's crying. 
All I did was sing the song and say, God bless you. He's crying. So I lay my hands on him to try to lift him up and to lay my hands on him. And I'm bomb rushed. Now for one hour and a half, I'm praying. Mm. OJ, am I telling the truth? True. <laughs> everybody in the church, everybody came out for you to lay hands on them. Everybody. The children came first. The oh my god, <laughs> it was it was beautiful. It was beautiful. It was beautiful. The moment you walked in, the moment you walked into the church, the entire atmosphere changed. Everything changed. I mean, it, it's indescribable. We can't describe it. And something hit us. Bishop, you notice it was the children. That came out first. Yes. I ran to you. The children were just running and they ran straight to you and you were laying hands on them and everybody fell asleep. It was, it was mind-blowing. It was, uh, you were supposed to be there for about 10 minutes. Yes. You stayed for almost two hours. Yes. <laughs> so I'm walking through the airport at, in Lagos. I'm with uh, uh, some people from Church of Redeem. The people who are doing the booking the seats, about 12 or 13 of them were booking seats and handling the, the bags and so on and so forth like that. I'm walking through, man stops. There's a big line there. You know, you're in Lagos, the, the airport is just pandemonium. And he stops, hold on one minute, one minute, one minute, one minute, one minute, one minute, one minute. And he comes up, now I'm nervous. And he comes over to me in the airport. And he says, I need you to pray for me. Bishop Bloom, right? Yes, I said, yes, you pray for me. And he goes on his knees in the airport place, man. And I turn around, the other people start coming. With, I said, this is crazy. So the guy from the Redeemed Church, he says, I never saw anything like this. These are the mm. employees. They're working at the airport. This, 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 I, I haven't seen this. That's the level of anointing that we're releasing today. That the Apostle Paul moved in a way that when his shadow fell on them, they were healed. I know it sounds crazy. I know it sounds crazy, but God is telling me that if he can get you out of your clutch fist and release an open palm, he can transform your life. So let's get this seed. We're going off, Shirley. I know you got to go to Bible study, but in the name of Jesus, I've been messing with your Bible study every week. In the, <laughs> in the name of Jesus. Dollar sign, big guy Bloomer, Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com. PayPal me, GGB Ministries, text to give, text Bloomer to 844-889-1559. Let's start sowing your seed. Let's start sowing your seed. Let's start sowing your seed, sowing your seed, sowing your seed. Let's give these uh, uh, pastors a word of deliverance, uh, uh, Apostle uh, uh, Brown. Give me a word of deliverance. Um, this is something I've been holding it. So let me try to share it with you quickly. And uh, we may have to come back to it another time. But um, the Lord is saying, we're in a, well, we know that we're in a new season. And in this season, there's a fresh fire. There's a new language. You're going to see the manifestation of the Lord working in a different way. There's a new entry. If you go back, and look at Acts 2 and 1, how everything became new, how the believers, uh, they, they experienced new. So this is harvest time. It's <laughs> time to celebrate. And you're going to have to sow. You're going to have to do something that's crazy that you've never done before. But we're in the new. And I heard the Lord say this. He said, it's now time for you to begin to sow for your new entry into the global season. You're sowing global seeds now. So harvest, harvest represents 50. You know, you got, you got to get with this because we are going to move forward into a whole new fresh fire, a whole new, new language. We're celebrating. It's harvest time. New entry, a global seed. Don't stop. Don't stop. Talk to them. Tell them that again. Uh, and, and, I, and I know sometimes you're uncomfortable with this, but the Lord is really, really using you in this area. And I know King is uncomfortable with it, but the Lord is really, really using you in this area because this is where we're going to be ministering at. 
He's really using you in this area. And it's, and, and, and it's true. Speak to them again. And that's why I say it over and over again, because uh, internet teaching and preaching is different from preaching at church. You're in front of the people. People are listening, but they're doing a lot. And, you know, our numbers don't drop that much. People listen to us through the, through the whole time. Uh, but God says that this seed is no longer local. Right. The, the, the harvest is going to spring up all over the place from everywhere. Uh, talk to them. Again, that is a new season. Go back and just read Acts 2 and start reading on through and see how things happen when all the believers, when they came together and see what happened in the upper room and just begin to look and see how everything changed. And it was harvest. Now we're in the harvest time. It is time to celebrate. I don't care what's going on out. I don't care what disaster you see. I don't care what dilemma you may be in. God said, tell everybody it's harvest time. It's time to walk into a new entry. And that we keep saying we want to be like Christ. Well, being like Christ means that we're going to do like he did. We're going to be strong. We're going to be bold. We're walking into this thing. New entry, new season. It's a global seed. You got to understand now that your seed is not just going to come up at one place. It's going to come up all over the place. So he said it's go global seed, new season, new fire, new language. We're getting ready to walk in a completely new arena. Overseer, you were shaking your head? Yes. You've talked years ago. You know, we people obviously say new level, new devil, it's because it rhymes, but you changed, you said new level is a new language and new linguistics. And that's where she oh, went, God. she went there, when that, that, at the next level, you can't give like you gave at the first level, wow. because if you're trying to go global, you got to give global. There's wow. a new language, a new linguistic. So that's why I was, when you stop, stop that's where I was going. Dollar sign, big guy, Bloomer, Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com, PayPal me, GGB Ministries, text to give, text Bloomer to 844-889-1559. I'm lingering with you. I'm lingering with you because I know that God is speaking. I also know that the enemy wants to fight this. He wants to, he wants to fight this. But what we talked about, what we talked about today is, is something. We started, uh, Evelyn, we started at, at what page? What page did we start at? And your book was 39. It's 39. This, what, 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 what was it? What was the heading of it? Satan Unmasked. Satan Unmasked. Let me find that. Satan Unmasked. And the other day we did, the other, the other day we did um, Halloween Worship the Horn God. We did that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we did that. We did that. Uh, this is, this is, this is, let me see when, when was this book written? I don't know. Let me tell you something about how, how, how our stuff never dies. Dollar sign, big guy bloom, Zilla bloom at bishopbloomer.com, PayPal me. Uh, gee, uh, uh, um, I, this was reprinted uh, in Canada 2017. But this is uh, this older than that, isn't it, King? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 17, that's just three years ago. This this That could be so. That's older. Mm -hmm. That's the original one. Yeah. That's the original one? Mm-hmm. Good day in the morning. Shirley, you got me beat. Hold it up again. Yes, sir. Woo! Now, now look, now, now look, look at the date when it was written. 1999. Wow. So that's 21 years ago. Yeah. Oh my God, Jesus have mercy. Oh God, have mercy, have mercy, have mercy. Um, and the, and, and, and uh, Evelyn. Yes, sir. What did you think about it? It was great, Bishop. I just saw things that I was looking at and didn't quite understand until I read it. And that, things with, like what? Dealing with different people um, in the church who did have a manipulation, a manipulated spirit, so to speak. Um, spoke like angels, walk like angels, mm. but when they wanted things their way, the manipulation part came forward. And I have mm. been receiving, I can say, a better awareness of that. That is that, 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 uh, I wanna change the word that, you, that, that you're using 
You said yes, you sir. received a better awareness. So yes, sir. Know, you received a deliverance concerning that. Thank you. Because we're learning that we're learning that this spirit of transfer is is demonic. Mm -hmm. it, it, it really, really is. It, it really, really, mm -hmm. really, it really, really is. All right, those leaders, a three, 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 three. Three, three, three. I'm, 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 I'm going to get off the phone. Three, three, three. Let me see how many we got them. Three, three, three. Check over there and see if any came in through there. We're going to break this today in the name of Jesus. That's one. That's two. That's three. That's four. That's four persons that responded. That means there's six others with that three, three, three offering. Three, three, three offering. Uh, overseer, let's pray. Let fear and doubt depart. Bring grace, bring peace. God, we thank you right now. Father, as we talked about the mind, God, right now, we, we, we break the cycle right now in the name of you. As they begin to give, God, let this lesson, God, let it be rooted down in their spirits, God, to release and not be afraid, not be doubtful, but to step out on the water and to, and, and to know that this last seed, this 333, is going to be the end of all the praying that they've been done. It's going to, it's going to release. It's going to be the answer to their prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. My God, my God. Dollar sign, big guy, Bloomer, Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com. PayPal me, GGB Ministries. Text to give, text Bloomer to 844-889-1559. Let's release this to the glory and to the honor of God and watch God, watch God do some things. Watch him move things out of your life and put things in. Watch him, watch him help you to deal with the manipulating uh, spirit, spirit of transfer. Let's talk for a quick moment before we go off about the spirit of transfer that exists in families, in families, hmm. okay, in, 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 in families, um, you know, you just feeling inadequate, like you can't do enough. The kids are now 35 years old and they're leeching on you like they're 12 and there's other people talking about you need to help them and they're 35 years old, that whole kind of manipulation that 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 goes on there or family jealousies those 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 kind of things sometimes bishop we call it as as curses and it's not necessarily a curse sometimes it's the attitude that the family has carried from one generation to one generation well i did this always and i did this and that really can keep you in a place of denial you could be in in a denial place and never get what you're supposed to get because you're still over. You know, you got to tell your kids to go get a job. You got to tell your kids to uh, get your credit straight. No, I'm not buying your car. No, I'm not co-signing for your car. Get, get you your own. You know, so a lot of things is we're feeling guilty because of something someone else did. It's a trickle down effect. And so we got to pinpoint it where it started the best of our ability and begin to cut it off and begin to get healthy. And I, and, and I felt it necessary to talk about that, um, um, that uh, you have to learn how to renounce the ways of family members without renouncing them. Absolutely. Learn how to say, I'm not going to do that. We're not going to live like this. This is not going to happen. This is not going to which call can you imagine the, the, the financial duress uh, that Oprah Winfrey uh, would have probably been under had she not set her family in order? Mm -hmm. I mean, the calling of every day. I mean, because you can't, there's no amount that you could ask her for that she doesn't have. Right. You know, right. <laughs> you know but she, she and, and when she had a show, she was talking about how family recording. She said, she said, I've learned just how to say no. Not, not because you, you need to get up and get a job and it's not my fault right. that you're in this and I'm not going to be manipulating you put on me and, and, and one of the audience members said well did it work and she says no but I don't answer anymore you know because the, you know when, when somebody's trying to get something from you they are relentless uh, one, right. one day Bishop Jones called me and says there's a preacher in town that's going through something in Bloom I need you to help him uh, um, uh, and, and when I get there I'll pay you back he needs $4,000 or he and his family is going to be put out the house and so on and so on like that and I gave him a number. Can you help him? I said, yeah, I can, I, I can do that. The preacher calls me and he says, hey, uh, can you do it? I said, yeah, it's going to take us a little while. He said, well, I need you to do it now. And I said, huh? He said, I need, it, I, I need you to do it now. Come on, man. We, we got to get this going. And so I said to him, 
I said, lack of planning on your part does not constitute an emergency on mine. In fact, I don't even know you. And I'm doing this for a friend. And I called Noel and I told Noel that when I went back to Noel's church, Noel had a sign up in his office that said, lack of plan on your part does not constitute an emergency on mine. He said, Bloomer, that was the best, that was the best thing. I said, this is crazy. Demanding, making this demand of me. And I don't even know who he is because he didn't, he didn't, he, he, he didn't have his stuff together. He never stopped. And Bishop, that might be a good point too, that maybe we can come back and talk about it sometime, is having leaders begin to understand that they need to set some boundaries too, because they get in all kind of entanglements and all kind of crazy stuff. They need to learn how to set boundaries. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No is not a bad word. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't, is it? Uh, you know, you, 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 you're right. You're right. Yes. Yes. You're right. No, it's not a bad one. But you know what? Setting boundaries can be hard for some of them because there's so much ridicule that's attached to it. You're supposed to be my pastor. I ain't gonna be sitting up in a pastor that I can't get to, and I do all that kind of stuff. And there goes that word again, right? Manipulation. Mm -hmm. Manipulation. Manipulation. We deal with that a lot at Bethel. I just want to have a meeting with Bishop. Okay. And then if I have a meeting, I don't want nobody in there but you and me. No, that's not going to happen. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not having no meeting with no woman in my office and the doors closed. I ain't have no meeting with a woman in my office and the doors open. Unless somebody else is in there. We live in the Me Too generation. Mm -hmm. right? There ain't no way in the world. And I, only have just, to I just only think have to fear... Fear needs to be broken off of people, especially our leaders. They need to just have fear broken off of them. You know, you may be lonely for a while. You may not have people around you for a while, but God will send the right people to you. You just got to get to that point where you lead the way he intended for us to lead and not by this, this leading in a... Um, dominating type force of people dominating over. We got to lead the way God intended for us to lead. All right. Now, those of you that are out there, we're going to leave you for the day. Uh, now you can begin to sow your seed at the level that the Lord spoke to you to sow your seed. Whatever that seed amount is, you can sow it, whether it's 33 or $10.33 or $42.10 or 4 dollars and 42 cents or four dollars and ten cents whatever it is but don't go off the line your 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 seed sowing is an amen to the program it's and it is so and i believe it and i set myself in agreement with you bishop that's what your seed is that's what it does so let's begin to sow now in the name of jesus dollar sign big guy bloomer zell bloom at bishopbloomer.com paypal me ggb ministries text to give text bloomer to 844 889-1559. I have not seen the cover of that book I know in 10 years. Hold it up like hold it up like that. Good day. That's a great cover, too. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> I am blown away. That 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 there, yeah. Wow. Got them all. <laughs> <laughs> people be people be giving me books that I forgot I wrote. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Uh, dollar sign, big guy, Bloomer, Zell, Bloomer, at bishopbloomer.com, PayPal, me, GGB Ministries, text to give, text Bloomer to 844-889-1559. You're sowing at every level. You're sowing at every level right now, at every level. You're sowing at every level right now in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. You're sowing at every level right now. Sow it, sow it, sow it, and release that seed right now into the soil of your breakthrough, into the soil of your deliverance, into the soil. Do it now in the name of Jesus. One more time, dollar sign, big guy, Bloomer, Zell, Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com. PayPal me, GGB Ministries, text to give, text Bloomer to 844-889-1559, 1559. Everywhere, everywhere. Get that seed, start sowing that seed in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Okay, uh, Overseer, give us your final uh, words for the day. Well, uh, intimidation, 
manipulation and domination. <laughs> I'm going to scare you, I'm going to trick you, or I'm going to make you. It's witchcraft. Mm -mm. That's it. You know anybody like that? Yes, sir. You would like to say their name online? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Woo -hoo! Yeah, buddy. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. All right, uh, 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 Shirley, your final uh, closing for the day. Final My word. final closing is what I started out with that brings all this together and it's powerful and we got to get a hold of this. You can't live beyond what you believe. Mm. You cannot. You cannot live. So we have learned today. We got ammunition today. We got artillery today. And we got to pack it right and start moving forward. Wow. OJ, OJ, you becoming, you're becoming a regular on warfare ecology. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, yes. OJ, your final words for today. I just want to say my final word is what I said to my people yesterday in church. I told them a native doctor, a native doctor is like a witch doctor. A native doctor is, God is not a native doctor. He's the real, the only real doctor that knows every outcome. Mm. What do you call him? You call him a what kind of doctor? Native doctor. Oh, that's native the witch doctor. doctor. Yes. Native doctor, like witch doctor. Yes. Yes. Wow. How was church yesterday? Church was good yesterday. How's the offerings coming? Is it still different? It's coming. It's co Bishop, uh, uh, the offering has changed for good. <sighs> it has changed for good. My After op Open Heavens, uh, the uh, uh, Millionaire Sunday, the church has not remained the same. It has not remained the same. And there are so many testimonies, so many testimonies, so many. Dollar sign, big guy bloomer, Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com, PayPal me, GGB Ministries, text to give, text bloomer to 844-889-1559, 1559. This is it. This is the last stretch for this Thursday. Get your seed in the ground, get your seed in the soil in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus. Tell me who can stand before us when we call on his great name. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus. Can you put up, can you put up the website so people can get this book? Let's put up the website. Uh, you can get this book, uh, 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 what, almost $11 off of the stand price. It's uh, on sale for you on the website for $3. You can lo download it. You can, you can have it right now in the next few seconds by downloading uh, this uh, 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 a book. Um, I forgot um, Oppressionless. Um, I forgot Oppressionless. And um, um, I got to find one of those books. Uh, uh, maybe they can put it up online. We got one? Oppressionless? The chick, yes, chick. Oh, she got it in her hand right there. Let me see it. Oh my God. You're putting me to shame. You're putting me to, sh you're putting me to shame. Uh, I, I think, wow. I, when was that written? When was that written? Uh, let's see. Oh, 1998. Jesus. Wow. Wow. 1998. Wow. Okay. Uh, uh, maybe we can have Tamila to put that up on, 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 on our website so people can uh, uh, um, get it in the name of Jesus. In the, in, in, in the name of Jesus. Dollar sign, big guy, Bloomer. We got it. We found it. Dollar sign, big guy, Bloomer, Zell, Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com, PayPal me, GGB Ministries, text to give, text Bloomer to 844-889-1559. And guess what? So we had it reprinted when I did it with, when I did it with Pastor Benny Hen. So let me find out when it was reprinted. Huh? 2012. Oh, but they listed it. You're right. But they, they still listed that it had been uh, done in 1989, the original, what you call it. And we did this special book for uh, 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 Benny Hen. Let me see yours. Uh, um, um, uh, all right. Yeah, we need to go back to the one you're holding in your hand. 
All right, uh, and and on the back of it is Bishop Bloomer and uh, uh, Benny Hen. Do they know Benny Hen there in Nigeria? Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is something. This is really, really something else. STDs, sexually transmitted deceptions and spirits, and it carries us back to talking about how that an attitude is a spirit that can be transferred. And when you find these in the scriptures, it's going to blow your mind. It's going to blow your mind. Sexual strongholds. I think we probably, I think we probably should do this one on one Monday. <laughs> on one Monday. Yes. Oh, no, no, no. Maybe we can touch on it on our November, what you call it, because we need to all be there to do the whole thing because we're going to get some people free from some sexual perverse, perverse things that they're doing in the bedroom, even though the bedroom is not defiled, it's still perverse. And there's some things that, that carry people away from them when they come out of the bedroom. They don't know how to leave it in the bedroom. All right. So this is it. We had a great, great day today. Uh, we was on uh, uh, woo, almost an hour longer than we're supposed to be in the name of Jesus, but it was all good. Dollar sign, big guy Bloomer, Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com. PayPal me, GGB Ministries, text to give, text Bloomer to 844-889-1559. Giving the last few people the opportunity to release that seed, to release that seed in the name of Jesus. This is that moment. This is that second. This is that hour. Release that seed in the name of Jesus. It's God, it's God, it's God. Release that, release that seed, release that seed, release that seed, release that seed, release that seed. Fear, fear, fear hits people. Fear, fear hits, 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 hits people. Fear hits people. But, you know, Reverend Ike said, you can't lose with the stuff I use. And he, he, he right, that you, you, you sure can. Release that seed today in the name of Jesus. All right, so the giveaway is on to, uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow at 1 o'clock. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be a big one tomorrow. Street. Say again? It's going to be a big one tomorrow? Yeah, it's going to be big. Yes, sir. All eyes be. Yeah. All right, all right. Praise our God. All right, thank you, Evelyn. Thank you so much. I think, You're welcome, Bishop. I think uh, uh, a Trice is raising a hand. I think, I think I see a hand being raised as we're going off. Uh-uh. Odessa. Bishop, will you excuse me, please? Absolutely, absolutely. God bless Blessings. you. Bless you. Blessings. Blessings to on. you all. Teach on. Teach on. <laughs> Teach on. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. I'm Odessa, sorry, Bishop. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to raise my hand. I was just... <laughs> I'm so sorry, but since you had me on there, I did so a seed. <laughs> like, since you got me on, yes, sir. I, I did so a seed for my my daughter. She had sent a seed yesterday uh, when you all was going off, or you it maybe you had just went off. So I did so that three thirty three for her on her behalf. Uh, yeah, Juanita yeah. Coley for Divine Connections. Okay. Wonderful, wonderful. You know we're getting ready for the uh, for the uh, uh, November the seventh. November. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. November the seventh. King, you reached out to uh, Bishop Trice already, right? She's on the list. Okay. Hey, you just call she's on about some, uh, for Bishop. It's for her. Bishop, you could, we'll, 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 we'll complete both of the emails together. Yeah. That's fine, but I didn't. I didn't mean to prolong you guys. I didn't mean to raise my hand. I'm actually just I went to lunch for my from my job. So all right, let you guys go. Blessings of the Lord on you. Dollar sign, big guy Bloomer, Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com. PayPal me, GGB Ministries. Text to give. Text Bloomer to 844-889-1559. Thank you so much for your seeds that you're sowing everywhere, everywhere. Thank you in the name of Jesus to continue the work that God has placed on us to get things done. We'll believe in you for it in Jesus' name. The paint on uh, my door is blood. Evelyn? Evelyn, when? Uh, uh, the paint on my door is blood. 
For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and I will smite all of the firstborn of the land of Egypt, both men and beasts, and against all of the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord, and the blood shall be a token upon the house where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not come upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. Exodus 12, 12, and 13, the covenant of protection. Here's the instructions. Come, my people, go home, shut yourselves in, go into seclusion for a little while until the punishing wrath is passed, because God is sure to come from his place to punish the wrong of the people of the earth. The earth itself will point out the bloodstain, and it will show where the murders have been hidden away. Isaiah 26, 20, 21, at the Message Bible. Go home, shut yourselves in, sanctify your homes, sanitize, sanctify yourselves, sanitize your home, love your children, sow a seed. Worship God. See you soon on Warfare Ecology. Oh,